Daniel. Batting second, a 12-time All-Star. He has won 10 gold gloves, a record for his second baseman. Number 12, Roberto Alomar. Batting third and playing first base, the 1995 American League MVP, a Norwalk, Connecticut native, Seton Hall standout, Mo Vaughn. He is a nine-time All-Star and a Louisville Slug Silver Slugger Award winner. 30 or more home runs each of his last seven years. Batting cleanup and catching Mike Piazza. He ranks among the franchise's all-time leaders in 10 offensive categories. He is the only man in history to record six hits in one game. Playing third, batting fifth, number 13, Edgardo Alfonso. He began his career with the Mets. He returns to Shea with 426 RBIs over the last four years. Batting sixth, the right fielder, number 20, Jeremy Vernitz. Batting seventh and playing center field, the man who delivered not one but two game-winning hits during the 2000 playoffs, number 44, Jay Payton. A three-time gold glover. He holds the major league record with 101 consecutive airless games at short. Number 10, Ray Ordonez. Last season, the Mets starting pitcher finished among the National League's leaders with a 3.31 ERA. Over the last six years, he has limited hitters to a 233 batting average. Warming up in the Mets bullpen, number 22, Tom's River, New Jersey native starter, Al Leiter. Now let's meet the 2002 New York Mets coaching staff. One of the most popular players in Mets history. First base outfield coach, Luke E. Wilson. Making his Mets debut, number eight, third base coach and infield coach, Matt Galati. A nine-year Major League veteran and former All-Star, number 51, hitting coach, Dave Ingle. Beginning his fifth season with the Mets, number 57, bench coach Tom Robson. In the bullpen, In the bullpen. a member of the 1986 championship team, number 52, Randy Neiman. And making his Mets Major League coaching debut, number 60, Juan Lopez. The man who the racked man up who 216 racked up wins and 2,300 strikeouts over his 25-year career, career, number 54, number 54 pitching four, coach pitching Charlie, Charlie Huff. Huff. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the rest of the 2002 New York Mets roster. Number three, catcher Vance Wilson. Number four, infielder John Valentin. Number five, infielder, Mark Johnson. Number 17, pitcher, Satoru Koyama. Number 18, pitcher, Jeff D'Amico. Number 25, outfielder, Gary Matthews, Jr. Number 29, pitcher, Steve Traxel. Number 32, pitcher, Bruce Chen. Number 34, pitcher, Pedro Estacio. Number 35, pitcher, David Weathers. Number 36, pitcher, Grant Roberts. On to the Sable list, the New York Mets captain. Number 45, pitcher, John Franco. Number 47, outfielder Joe McEwing. Number 48, pitcher Kane Davis. Number 49, pitcher Armando Benitez. Number 53, pitcher Mark Guthrie. Number 55, pitcher Sean Estes. The head trainer of the Mets, Scott Lawrenson. The assistant trainer, Mike Hurst. Head strength and conditioning coordinator, Jim Malone. 
the assistant the fitness assistant and conditioning fitness coordinator, Jose Vasquez. Jose Vasquez. The, equipment the equipment manager, manager Charlie Samuels. Samuels. And the assistant, the assistant equipment, equipment manager, manager Vinnie Greco. Greco. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2002 New York Mets. It's a special day from just about every vantage point, whether that of a fan, a player, or a member of team management. It's opening day when all seems right in the world. Today, the Mets take on the Pittsburgh Pirates as they raise the curtain on their 41st season, a season that is perhaps the most anticipated one in team history because of... On opening day is former mayor Rudy Giuliani on hand here for this game as the New York Mets are taking the field. So, Mark, the first time since 98 that the Mets have opened the season here Please at home. Please direct your attention to uh, television. Beautiful, sunny attention. afternoon. A little breezy, but not States. bad. Let's go to the public address announcer to continue these opening day ceremonies. Roger Luce. Joins me in welcoming all of you. All of you. The opening day. Thank you very much. Laura joins me in welcoming all of you to opening day. I've been the president for a little over a year now, but I've been a baseball fan my whole life. Baseball is one of our nation's proudest traditions. Baseball unites our country and teaches us the value of teamwork. I wish all the teams and all their fans the best of luck this season. May God bless you all and may God bless America. Now, play ball. Part of the opening day ceremonies, all that's left now is get this game underway. And there is the Mets opening day starter, Al Leiter, to go against the Pirates today. And the pitcher is Al Leiter. Fran Healy and Ralph Kiner. I'm Gary Thorne, and great to have you with us, everybody. They're in the first broadcast of a Mets game ever on MSG. And let's take a look at the starting lineups. Pittsburgh Pirates have had three starting lineups for opening day so far. We hope this one stays the same. There's uh, Adrian Brown leading it off. Jason Kendall will be doing the catching. Aramis Maria, uh, Ramirez at third. Kevin Young will be at first base. Armando Rios in left. Craig Wilson in right. Mike Benjamin starts at short. Pokey Reese at second. And Ron Ballone will be doing the pitching. Well, Al Leiter on the mound today for the Mets. Opening day pitcher. He has, in the past, started two other opening days, and this is a big one for Al Leiter. Al Leiter, the number one guy in his pitching staff, and with some luck last year, he could have had 15 to 17 wins. And now uh, the defense for the New York Mets. In left field, so Daniel Patton in center, Peyton in center, Burnitz, newcomer, back with the Mets in right field. Alfonso at third base, Orgonius at short, Alomar at second base, Ron at first base, and Piazza the catch. And a strike thrown by Al Leiter to Adrian Brown, who leads it off in center field. The reason for the lineup changes, Brian Giles, the, their offensive star, is out of the game. Check swing foul ball. He was here and took batting practice and uh, pulled a little muscle in the ribcage. So Giles is out of there. He's a, an outstanding player. He's put up some excellent numbers for the Pirates since coming over from the Cleveland Indians. Well, the Pirates had to move their entire lineup around. As a result, Leiter with a two-strike count on Adrian Brown, 28-year-old center fielder. And the left-hander high and away to him, one and two. Well, Brown had a, an injury that kept him out most of the last season, so the Pirates are hoping that he can establish himself as an everyday center fielder. Pirates who lost 100 games last year. Trying to improve on that. That one taken to left field. Sedeno. 
Gary you mentioned 100 losses last year the Pirates up their, their ticket prices this year and boy oh boy have they been hurt in attendance second year of that new ballpark out there in Pittsburgh. Last season the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates had a great attendance for the opening year at that ballpark but they're expecting about one point six million this year and that is a come down of about a half a million people and yeah, they were hoping that that new ballpark would carry over for a few years because the ball club right now they are calling it rebuilding stage lighter gets the first out of the season for the Mets and here is Jason Kendall Al lighter last year dropping down the walk surrendered to a career low and outstanding control giving up only two point two walks per nine innings eighth best in the league. And a fine record at Shea. He was eight and three here at home last year with a 2.72 home ERA. Kendall takes the pitch inside and a 2-0 count on Jason Kendall. He was the uh, pitcher that was in two games the Mets had to win to be in contention for the National League East Championship. And in the ninth inning, he lost one with a lead of four to one. And in the ninth inning, another, he lost it with a lead of five to one. He didn't lose it actually it was lost in the bullpen. Two of the most devastating losses of the Mets all year long last year. Two one delivery is fouled off Bruce Fremming. So there's one for Fremming. Thirty one years for this home plate umpire Bruce Fremming. And that's what he gets for opening day. Never get used to that feeling. One of the things, Fran, that you don't know about, I went in to see Bruce Fremming just before the game. I'm happy because he told me one time he was very depressed. You don't talk to him. <laughs> that is very true. I went in there. And he couldn't have been more surprised. <laughs> Understandably so after 31 years. <laughs> Ed Rapuano, Larry Poncino, and Tony Randazzo are the other umpires today. That one on a broken bat. So Leiter gets his first broken bat. Two down. Well, Elias Sports Bureau should certainly count the number of broken bats that Al Leiter will Here's get during the course of the season because he has to lead all of baseball. He breaks five or six bats a game. Maybe more than that. Yeah. I see it right there. He jams Kendall, and Kendall hits the ball right back to him. Ramirez he got jammed to short Ray Ordonez didn't break the bat but got the out. That's how you settle it in if you're the open day pitcher Al Leiter retires the Pittsburgh Pirates in order. Now the great expectations the New York Mets offense a lineup look when we come back to the left Roberto Alomar at second Mo Vaughn at first Mike Piazza doing the catching Edgardo Alfonso will hit fifth Jeremy Burnett sixth Jay Payton Ray Ordonez and Al Leiter. And Ron Vallone on the mound for the Pirates. Take a look at his numbers. Ron Vallone features a sinker slider. So that's what the Mets will get from the southpaw during the course of his ball game. Number 19, Roger Cedeno. A couple of Mets going to be welcome back home today. Which the fans hope will make some magic. Roger Cedeno and Jeremy Burnett's two former Mets, who now are back with New York. And the Bulldog, Ron Ballone, 32 year old left hander from New Jersey, with a lot of tickets out today himself, with family and friends on hand. And Cedeno takes the pitch up high for a ball. What does it tell you about a team, though, that a guy who was a spring invitee? turned down by all 30 teams on the waiver wire is your starting pitcher. It tells you that uh, they need pitching. Wow. They have only one starter back Anderson from last year's rotation and Ron Vallone his contract was picked up from the minors only yesterday that was just a formality. Uh, I'll tell you for Lloyd McClendon mm. two and one. How do you hold a manager responsible for a ball club when the ball club to begin the season is not really a contending club and everybody knows it including the owner of the Pirates. You can't can you. I don't think you can. So long as you're playing hard as long as the guys are giving everything they've got and uh, doing what they can. Well the one thing that you can guarantee fans coming through the turnstiles is hustle. You can't guarantee base hits you can't guarantee home runs but you can guarantee hustle. Did not go around on that pitch so Sedano 
who would love to draw a lot of walks this season in that leadoff spot with the speed that he has gets ahead on the count here three ball one strike count to Sedano and that one down to third is a foul ball and will go three and two played by Ramirez in foul territory Sedano almost had the stolen base high last year he finished with 55 stolen bases second in the majors he was benched for about four weeks in a personal dispute with the manager that was more than a dispute wasn't it yes I'm going to teach you a lesson with Detroit here's a 3 2 delivery to him and Sedano again fouls off Malone's pitch yeah Phil Gardner was the manager or is the manager of the Tigers and he decided to bench Sedano they had a personality problem and it cost him the stolen base title in the American League each row beat him up by about two Boy, that's hard huh? and that's that's very very tough especially for a guy who played like Phil Gardner put him out there don't get a chance to get a record of any kind very often fights off again and the count remains three and two on three foul balls well this is a tone setter right here Ralph the first man with good speed second man good speed you want to keep them both off the bases you don't want to walk them make them hit to get in well, the Mets have really added on some real good base runners in this club. So Daniel holds the Mets record with 66 in 1999. And for the fourth time, he fouls the pitch back. So Vallone trying to find a way to get him. Mookie Wilson held the Mets record prior to Sedano picking up the stolen base mark and moved ahead of Mookie for the season mark for stolen bases in Mets history. Little nippy with the wind blowing, but out in the sun, it is just beautiful today. Here's a 3 2 pitch, and he got him looking. Good comeback by Vallone. Good pitch from Vallone, and he has to throw strikes to Sedano. You cannot walk a guy with that type of speed. You have to throw strikes, and he came back and threw strikes. In the defense for the Pirates, it is Rios in left field, Brown in center field, and Wilson in right. Ramirez at third base, Benjamin at shortstop, Oki Reese at second baseman, Kevin Dunn at first base, and Jason Kendall at the catching position. And Roberto Alomar, welcome to Shea Stadium. One of the game's great players, future Hall of Famer, 306 career average as he comes into this year. And batting second in the lineup. Malone inside to him. How about most gold gloves by a second baseman since the inception of the award. He's got 10 of them. The other expectation not only offense for the Mets but defense in that infield which really should be superb this season. Alomar 34 years old 12 time all star. The 1 1 pitch a check swing foul back. One thing that really stands out in your mind we mentioned in spring training about Alomar when you talk to him as you look at Mo Vaughn on deck. When you talk to Alomar, and I, I, this should not sound trite, but this guy absolutely loves what he's doing. He said the biggest thrill of his professional career was the first day he got into the big leagues. And it's been a thrill ever since. He's played the same way ever since, oh, too, friend. Boy. Alomar got jammed on that, fouls it back, and a one ball, two strike count. He hasn't had much success in opening day, though, as far as swinging the bat. Kind of funny, isn't it? A great player like that would uh, would struggle on opening day. He's 0 for 17 on opening day. His last 17 at bats, he has not had a base hit. Pretty amazing for a 300 hitter. One ball, two strike count below on the left hander. Now, Alomar is a switch hitter, keep in mind. Last year, hit 279 off lefties and 356. Off right handers he had both a better average and almost double the home runs 13 to 7 from the other side of the plate. Got to thank the Mets way back in the 60s for Robbie Alomar being a switch hitter because his dad when he was a member of the Mets organization was convinced to try switch hitting and because of that his son became a switch hitter because Robbie's idol is his dad Sandy Alomar senior who's a coach with the Cubs. So the Mets organization did have an effect on Robbie Alomar years ago. Down the line, fine stop made. Kevin Young not hit that hard. Young gets over, and uh, Sedano and Alomar are retired, and here's Mo Vaughn. Good job at first base by Mo, and of course he weighs somewhere in the vicinity of 275 pounds, but he got over them and a good stop. Taking the base hit away from Alomar at first base. I should say Kevin Young. 
Well, here's part of that hope for power. 1,346 games. He closes in on some milestones and home runs and RBIs. And Vallone takes on Vaughn, who's one for four against him. And a high inside, one and zero on Vaughn. Left-handed power. That's not it. <laughs> Little wiffle ball game going out there in the uh, parking lot. Can't get a ticket. Play wiffle ball. And listen to the crowd. 1-0 delivery. Up high again. Fastball. Interesting that we have Mo Vaughn's next home run is his 300th that will be picked up on the season. And Roberto Alomar's got 999 RBIs as a second baseman. So they both have uh, milestone numbers that they're one away from. Piazza waiting on deck. Piazza's already got that 300. 2 0 delivery. Took something off that pitch. Malone gets the inside corner. 2 and 1. No one has ever had a home run in this first game for another team to get the 300 home runs. Andre Dawson hit number 400. With his first team away from his original team. Hit it with the Red Sox. 2 1 delivery by Vaughn. Two Vaughn is foul back into the seats. Well, one thing Mo Vaughn did a lot of in spring training, I thought Ralph, was he hit that ball to left center field with some power. Of course, at Fenway Park, it's a it's a home run. We'll see if he turns on the ball here at Shea Stadium. Mets are hoping for a lot of home runs. Mo's got something to prove, not only coming off his injury, but also to the California Angels. You know, you said an interesting thing in left field at Fenway. It's very short with a high fence. And really you can get a lot of singles on fly balls but not home runs. Wade Boggs made a living off that lining balls that off the right. left field that wall. Him, yes. Well if you hit that fly ball left field up in Fenway that baby can go into the net and Mo Vaughn picked up a number of home runs going the other way at Fenway Park. He also hit well over 32 years ago with the Anaheim Angels. The question on Mo Vaughn of course is going to be staying healthy and uh, the year off. Can he come back to the Mulvon we think of after missing a season? Malone goes outside to him, and the count is three balls and two strikes. He is definitely excited about being back in New York, about playing for this team. He just did not fit with the Anaheim Angels. It, it did not work. Sellout crowd here today at Shea Stadium. Hoping to see some offense. The wind is blowing out towards right field. 3 2 breaking ball. Whoa. Two fine changeups. Each of these starters retiring the opposing side in order. This year, all season long, we are going to have reports for you that are being provided by a mystery scout. And with these kind of reports, it better remain a mystery because. <laughs> That outfield might go after him from Pittsburgh. <laughs> well, there's that scouting report. Childs, Ramirez, Kendall, and Reese, rest of the roster, AAA. And the scout is heading for his car. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is a living, breathing person affiliated with baseball. Who's, That's all we can say. Who's not afraid to step up if asked. That's right. And his career is going to be short lived. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Ramirez. Well, I thought it was going to be Ramirez. I told you this lineup was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Young coming up. Young uh, Rios and then Wilson. What a way to start for Lloyd McClendon. He uses, loses his best offensive player in batting practice of game one before the game even starts with Giles going out. So Young got the number four hole for Pittsburgh today. It would have been Giles Ramirez and Young had he gone been able to go with the original lineup. Lighter with a strike out. How's that to be Lloyd McClendon? You get Giles an opening day. He's out of the lineup. Gee. Same thing Pittsburgh went through last year. Swung through that one one and two. Well, they got that ball fastball right by him. Lighter with a 1-2 delivery. And misses up high. 
for Young, the first baseman, 32 years old, a 262 career hitter, and has been a Pirate regular now on opening day and throughout the season at first base. Mets play him straight away. 2 2 delivery to him is up high again by Leiter, and the count goes full. Three and two. Well, Al's got a lot of support here today, including the mayor of New York, who he supported in his campaign, and also former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani, is here. And Al was a Yankee pitcher one time. So how can Al go wrong? He's got all the bases covered. Oh, turn off the front of the dugout screen, and the count's three and two. And to keep your eye on that one. Three ball two strike count again. Young has power. Full count delivery and Young threw a heater. There's Elf's first strike out of the year tonight on MSG Network catch the premiere of Angles MSG's newest show taking the hottest topics on in sports El Troutwig and John Zioni will tackle the most controversial issues every possible direction tonight take a look Major League Baseball's labor dispute is the topic that's Angles tonight MSG Sports Gusket will follow on MSG and Al Leiter will be a guest on that show tonight to talk about Major League Baseball's collective bargaining situation. Armando Rios fouls that one back. Rios getting the start in left field. You see 95 games last year. He is in for Giles, who would have made that start in left for the Pirates today. And the 0-1 by Lighters up high, 101. Not a very deep bench, so with injuries or players out, not a lot to go to. Greg Wilson waiting on deck. Pirates finished last year 62 and 100 for Lloyd McClendon. Losing seasons have become the staple for this team. And uh, that is not a good thing. It was their first 100 loss season since 85 and only the second for the Pirates since 1954. Rios fouls it back. Two ball, two strike count. They eliminated the fact that 1952, the Pirates had a record for losses. 112, and I have to be on that team. Did you help out? I converted it to the loss. <laughs> yes. You tried to forget it, but you couldn't. 2-2 two -two delivery, and Rios takes the off-speed pitch inside. Three and two. That was the... Uh, First year of Branch Rickey running the ball club as a general manager. He had an infield that was making a total of $24,000 all the way around. 6,000 at first base, 6,000 at second, 6,000 at short, and 6,000 at third. Well, you had all the money. That was not quite the reason. <laughs> Didn't you say that the uh, the steel uh, workers they they had a league and the, the, some of those players were making more? The uh, in summer pro baseball, yes. That's unbelievable. Three two delivery and he walked it. So Leiter surrenders the walk with one down. Rios becomes the first base runner of the ball game. And you wonder if the Pirates will try and attempt to steal a base against. The New York Mets. The Pirates struggled in the stolen base category last year, but in order for them to beat the Mets, they're going to have to employ the stolen base. See what they do. It'll be interesting here to see just how many players they'll try and run. The other thing, remember, Mo Vaughn now breaking in at first base is still learning how to play the base runner off the bag. He's not done that before, and he's worked on it this spring. And Leiter gets the pitch up high. Leiter's missing up high here in the ball game so far when he's missing. Gary, this guy here at the plate hit seven pinch hit home runs last year. They're trying to find a place for him to play. He's playing right field today. And Craig Wilson is a dead fastball hitter. I was told that all last year, that's all he would see is fastballs, even when he was lighting it up as a pinch hitter. And again, Leiter's up high to him and falls behind on the count 2 and 0. Oh. And obviously not happy with the pitch location right now as these things are staying up on him and that can be dangerous if he comes down just a little bit lower and ends up in the wheelhouse. 2 0 count on Craig Wilson. And he pops that one up. High skies. Sedano Ordonia is looking at each other 
Ordonez calls and makes the play. So Daniel looked like he lost it and, and couldn't pick it up. You know, Ordonez at the last minute called him off. That's why it's important to have a shortstop who has a lot of confidence in himself with that glove. He can go a long way and you see Sir Daniel fighting that sun. He's just, it looked like to me that he was yelling, I can't see it. I think you're right. But he is, a, he has the best man in baseball at catching those little Texas Leaguers. You know, it's funny, Ralph. I think it's to the point now where if, if Ordonez can get to it, the outfielder should back off because Ordonez has the, the better hands. And the confidence, and you don't want to take away his aggressiveness. So let Ordonius run as far into the outfield as he can get, and let him catch the ball. I know it's against baseball rules. The outfielder is supposed to be able to call the infielder off. One of the bravest New York Mets of all time was uh, Bud Harrelson, and I mean even he was brave because on those kind of pop-ups like that, Ron Swoboda was playing left field, <laughs> and Ron came in like a thundering herd, and he didn't know whether he was going to get killed or not. <laughs> Well, you could see Sedano was happy Ordonius was out there to make that grab, but the sun is the thing that will give you a problem right now. Mike Benjamin, the shortstop, missed last season because of injuries. 1-1 one, one count, runner goes. Taken inside, Piazza's throw is not in time. But he came off the bag, and they get the out. Well, we're going to see teams test Mike Piazza this year. <laughs> You can see the runner going off the base and Alomar staying with the tag. Maybe he helped him a little bit, push him off, did he? No, I don't think so. Watch him, he went right by. Seven teams in seven years for 32 year old left hander Ron Ballone, who will face Mike Piazza coming to the plate for the Mets. Right here, they. Caught ceiling, even though it got to the bag, he came off the bag and didn't retain possession of the bag. So it's caught ceiling. Now, Robbie Cam, one of two new cameras in use here that'll have those shots at second base, the other one way out there in left field. Mike Piazza takes it for a strike. That's probably the first time in baseball history that they set up a special camera for shortstop and second base. And that's because of two of the best in the business. You have some great shots of guys uh, turning double plays out there from that angle, crossing the bag. The 0 1 pitch by Valone misses away. That's the camera we were talking about way up there in the lights. See in that little break right there. And you'll have shots from that looking back down that left field line and around the ballpark. Hey. Doubles as a security camera. A one ball, two, I'm just kidding. One ball, two strike count on Piazza. But then again, it might. <laughs> Got one in right field as well to take shots down in the other corner. That uh, oftentimes balls were lost over there in that left field corner. Piazza, what a shift they've got on. Look at the right fielder here. Wilson is swung way around. He's in the gap in right center field where Piazza oftentimes will take a pitch. If you have a hit one down the right field line, he can walk home. Malone takes it inside and a two ball two strike count on Piazza. Ralph last year we saw Mike Piazza probably pulled the ball, ball more than he's pulled it in his whole career. He didn't hit as many home runs I don't believe to right field as we have seen him do in the past. Well, he is awfully strong to right center field. There's no question about that. You know he was talking about what goes through his mind. He was telling me when he goes to the plate one thing he wants to do between the on deck circle and the batter's box is Quiet his breathing. Calm his body down for total relaxation. Well, anxiety is certainly a detriment to being a good hitter. Two ball, two strike count on Piazza leading off the second inning for the Mets. Scoreless game. Malone, another fastball, foul back. One There's a look from left field. You can't buy that ticket. You don't want to buy that. No, thing. you don't. You could be blown <laughs> off the roof if you had that ticket. <laughs> the operator has this beautiful seat down the left field line and high up. No, it's not the operator. 2 2 delivery. And Piazza takes it up high, 3 and 2 from below. One of the things that happened to Mike Piazza this spring, he was hit by a pitch four times. 
And uh, that's way too much for spring training for anybody. And in his career, he's been hit 18 times by pitch. There's one down that right field line, and there's no way the right fielder is going to get it. And that is a fair ball into the corner. Couldn't be handled by Pokey Reese. Piazza gets a double, a ground rule double, as a fan reached over for it. So Piazza's on. Mets have their first hit. Just saw Mike Piazza do something he rarely does. He watched his ball and didn't bust it down the first baseline. You don't see that very often from Mike Piazza. Maybe a little body English hoping that ball will stay fair. I think he's hurt. Nope, sorry. It's a call. Saw him coming back towards the dugout, wondered what the problem was. He thought it was a foul ball. You know what? Fan interference, but you can, if you want, you can say that the only place that Piazza would have made it to is first base. That's right. That was a good call by the umpire at first base, Ed Rapiano. And if, it's funny because we mentioned how Mike usually busted every time out of the batter's box. If he's busting it here, he gets himself a double because the umpires can then say, well, he would have had a double. Very unusual to see Mike Piazza watch a ball. I got a feeling he felt this baby was going foul. Of course. Sir. And the second baseman pursuing that ball, Pokey Reese, he was in fair territory when that ball hit his glove. See, but when it hit his glove, friend, you're right. Mike wasn't even at first base. Yeah, Mike, and you never see him do that. So that mistake by Piazza cost the Mets in a base right there. And also he stopped at first base. So he pretty much said, I got myself a single. And so the umpire said, well, go back to first. Here's Edgardo Alfonso. So Piazza gets only a single out of that. Alfonso's numbers last year with the bad back nowhere near what Edgardo Alfonso can do offensively when healthy. So Bobby Valentine talking to John Franco starts the season on the DL. Will not be happy about that. He went out and talked to Bruce Fremming, the home plate umpire, but as Ralph said, that's a good call. There's no way he was going to be at second base. 0 1 count. Throw over. Young playing off the bag with Piazza not a threat to go. You know, that's an interesting call because an umpire has discretion. If you hit a Grand's Rule double that a fan gets involved with or whatever, of giving the, the an extra base. Even a triple? Yeah. He could get scored as a triple. But they never call that. I've never seen a call in not, maybe a year. Not that case. But in that case, it was a single. That's as far as Piazza wanted to go. Alfonso not happy with that call. Turns around on Bruce Fremming. Take a look at that last pitch to Fonzie. Looks like it touched the inside part of the plate and ran off the plate. That's a good pitcher's pitch. Alfonso now two strike count. Alfonso a 289 career hitter and Valone's up high the left hander one and two on him. Alfonso had a great spring training. Back looked healthy. Last year he hit 211 against left handers and that's just unbelievable. Burnett's waiting on deck. You would figure him to be a pretty close to a 300 hitter off left handers. One two delivery. Edgardo takes that up high as well on a two ball two strike count on Alfonso. Mets last year. Disaster and run scored. Mike Piazza the only guy who delivered consistently for them. They dropped 165 runs from the year before to last year. This year they'd like to go the other way. That's going to be a base hit. In the Bermuda Triangle. Alfonso's on and the Mets have first and second covered with nobody out. Well, two very bloopy type hits <laughs> the New York Mets. So you know what's going through Mike Piazza's mind right now Ralph. He's on second base after he got a single. There's a chance he scores on his ball. I would doubt that because he had to hold up if mean, that happened yeah. with him on second. And, and you know the amazing thing about it is, is we've commented so many times about Mike Piazza busting it down to first base. And in a case like this he was penalized because he was watching the ball. Jeremy Burnett's runners at first and second against Vallone as the Mets get a scoring chance with nobody out. Set up by a couple of bloop singles. And Burnett's bounces away Kendall. 
Able to get it. That was up high. Ball one on Burnett's. Well, a lot of talk about Kendall moving to another position. That talk has stopped in Pittsburgh. Kendall's going to be the catcher. He tried left field last year, and they said he pretty much was embarrassed playing that position. A little like Todd Henley. Right. Ballon with a 1 0 count. The odds of the lead runner at second. And Burnett's with a big cut. Foul tips that one at the plate and a one ball one strike count to Jeremy Burnett's. Now this is where one of the issues regarding the Mets comes into play. Burnett strikes out a lot. These are the situations where the Mets need to have RBI production. And they are hoping that Jeremy Burnett's will be able to cut down on the strikeouts this year. And develop as a better RBI man for the Mets than he could at Milwaukee where they set a new major league record in strikeouts. As a team. Bases are loaded. Cut the jersey. Well, Burnett's hanging in there. And Ballone thinking he could get him inside, and he did. He got him. Literally got him. Just touched the shirt. Good call by Bruce Fromey and the home plate umpire. Listen to this. Three on, nobody out. The infield will play in at first and third. Double play depth at second and short. Now they move Young, the first baseman, back as well. You know, Gary, Jay Payton. Although this is Payton's first at bat of the year, this could be a huge at bat for Payton. Base hit here, get off on the right foot, driving a couple runs. He was hot and cold in spring training. He was given the job by Bobby Valentine. Steve Phillips loves him, so. This could be a big at bat for Peyton. Sven Williams is the pitching coach for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Out to have a word with Ron Vallone. In trouble here in the second inning with the bases loaded and nobody out. You have to settle Vallone down. I mean, he lives on adrenaline. And when he knows he's going to be pitching about three days before he starts, he is super hyper. And, you, and, you, and with a sinker ball pitcher, you really want him very, very relaxed, somewhat tired. You don't want a hyper pitcher with a sinker ball because that means he's going to be throwing that baby too hard. But this is a great hitting situation for Jay Payton, Ralph. It certainly is. And uh, psychologically, it's a good set off, a good year for oh, him. Oh, boy. 1 0 count, Jay Payton. And misses down low 2 and 0 in the. That bat gets even better. Of course, if the hypertension is going to be a problem, those two blue pits have got the raised considerably. Last year, Peyton went four for 16 as a pinch hitter. No grand slam home runs. He has one in his career. The 2 0 delivery by Malone. Inside corner strike. You know, you talk about that uh, tension in your body. You mentioned how Mike Piazza said as he goes to the plate, he wants to. Calm down, get a more relaxed feeling as you look at the runners on the bases. And here's a situation where Peyton should take a page from Mike Piazza's book because I'm sure he's wired right now. Only infielder in at third base is Ramirez. 2 1 delivery. Ripped. Foul. And he broke the bat. Got out in front of that one. What Vallone has been successful at so far is coming back off the fastball. Fastball changeup. Trying to keep the hitters off stride because we mentioned earlier he's not going to overpower anybody. He's what is known as a crafty left hander. Bobby Valentine hoping the Mets can get on the board right here. 2 2 count on Peyton. The odds Alfonso Burnett's of the base runners. Here's a 2 2 delivery. 3 and 2. Well, he threw off speed pitches in the first inning to Mo Vaughn with Mike Piazza on deck. So he chanted, so he's got a lot of confidence in his off speed pitch. Because hey. you don't want to want Vaughn and end up pitching Piazza. Full count uh, curveball through to uh, Vaughn to strike him out. And he also on the 3 2 pitch did it to Sid Daniel. Walked in a run. Bases loaded, walk, Piazza scores. And the Mets have a 1 0 lead.
So Jay Payton showing that he's able to take a pitch gets the RBI first one for the Mets this year bases remain loaded and Ray Ordonez totals from last year stronger hitter showed it in spring training and Ordonez takes a strike on the inside corner in batting practice today Ray Ordonez one turn around try to hit every ball to the right of second base. We'll see if it pays off here. Ballone goes away with that sinker. Bobby Valentine loved a line drive to right field. Yeah, but why was uh, O'Donius taking that pitch? This is where you got to hit the ball. Down the line could be trouble. Alfonso at third tags. He's coming. Here's the throw by Rios to Kendall. Drop the ball. Two to nothing, Mets. Well, a real gamble here by the third base coach of the New York Mets. Very short fly ball. And the throw was offline. The runners at first and second did not go on the throw home, which was a mistake. But the gamble paid off right there. The Mets now are leading the game. See Matt Galanti, a third base coach, telling Fonzie to tag up. Fonzie goes. Throws off the line. Of course, they have so many scouting reports on these throwing arms. That was a give me the way McAlanty told him to tag up. He must have said tag up and score. Looking for the bunt now with one away. Lighter. Takes it up high for a ball. Charging in. And I mean charging. They're trying to hold Ramirez back at third so that he can cover the bag and try and get the lead runner, Burnitz, who's on at second. First and second, one down. Two runs in for the Mets. And Al Leiter last year struggled in the sacrifice bunt category. He did not have a sacrifice bunt in 64 plate appearances last season. That's an ouch for a starter. 1 0 count here. Malone. Infield rotates. They try it second, and Reese had to haul that one in. Started to rotate the infield to try and draw the base runner towards third and then sneak the second baseman in behind him. Good play by Pokey Reese keeping that ball in the infield. Pokey Reese one time gold glove winner beating out Alfonso. 1 0 count on Lighter. Lighter squares. Fouls it off and caught Kendall. <laughs> one ball one strike count on Lighter. Right now, Kendall's in. I wish I could play left field again. Here's that ball bunted right off the bat, off of the catcher. Mm. The one guy that's hoping Leiter puts the ball in play is the catcher. You'd rather not get hit with a foul ball, and you get a chance of cutting down a runner at third base. And this guy can get out in front of home plate in a hurry, Jason Kendall. Malone has already thrown 50 pitches when he lets this one go. We're in a second inning. One ball, one strike count. Lighter did not square. Takes it up high and a two ball, one strike count. Well, Bobby Valentine, I'm sure, aware of that stat on Al Lighter as you look at Sedano on deck. And Bobby Valentine probably feels he's better off if he lets Lighter swing the bat. And yeah, Lighter last year did that, faked the bunt and swung away and hit a triple. He went four for 62 last year. He hit 065. Does square, takes it. And a two ball two strike count on lighter. This is where a pitcher can really help himself in a ball game offensively if you, if you can bunt move these runners into scoring yeah. position. Very important part of the game for a pitcher and believe me I'm sure Al's as frustrated as anybody in his struggles with the bunted ball. Now two and two one down he squares again and tried and he's out of there fouling off for strike three. So Malone gets his third strikeout. Leaves the runners. Burnett's at second and Peyton at first. And McClendon's team's got a chance here getting out of this inning with just a couple of runs off Malone. Lead off batter Roger Sedano. First and second down. Mets have done this with just two hits and they were bloop singles that didn't travel 300 feet when put together. Two down. 
And a strike taken by Sedano. Sedano's never had a hit off alone. He is 0 for 8 off this left hander. With Alomar waiting on deck. That's got a couple of switch hitters at the top of the order this year. He started around. They check it first. Rapuano says no. One and one on Sedano. Boy, is that a luxury, though? They have two switch hitters with good speed at the top of the order. Take a look at that. Sedano with that great speed. Aren't many switch hitters left in baseball no. compared to 10, 15 years ago and back. 1 1 delivery. He came right at him that time. May have been a little up high and out of the strike zone. 85 mile an hour fastball. It used to be switch hitters as you take a look at that swing again. It used to be you were a switch hitter to stay away from that breaking ball, Ralph. Left handed would throw you more fastballs if you're batting from the right side, but that's gone down a tube. It's left handers will throw you breaking balls no matter what, and so will right handers. Here's the one two delivery, and he fights off the inside pitch to keep it at a ball and two strikes. Malone working hard and the youngster gets the souvenir. How's that smile for opening day. Atlanta's already taken a four nothing lead against Philadelphia in Atlanta in their opening game today. One ball two strike count Malone with runners at first and second. And Sedano inside outs to right. Wilson running Wilson Wilson can't get it. And the runners are caught in a jam here. Oh another base running mistake by Jay Payne. Daniel almost ran by him. There were two down and he didn't realize it and he stopped and was at second base when the ball fell in. He should have scored. He forgot how many outs there were. Yeah, so Jay Pay was more concerned with the ball being caught with two outs. He should be on the move and the ball drops in. Wilson had to run, run a long way for that ball, but Payton with great speed. And when you have that great speed, you just outrun your mistakes. And Jay hustled to third base. So Daniel was flying around first base. I'm sure he was watching the ball also. So the Mets have had two base running mistakes here in the inning. One by Piazza, that one by Payton. Still they have the 3-0 lead, and now Roberto Alomar. Runners at second and third, two down. RBI single for Sedano. Three bloop hits in the inning. And Roberto Alomar takes the pitch away. 2-0 count. Now Alomar is one of the best in all of baseball with runners in scoring position. Roberto Alomar hit over hit 424 in these situations last year. Second best in the game. Another off-speed pitch and a two-ball, one-strike count on the changeup. Mets have two in scoring position with Peyton and Sedano. 37 pitches have been thrown now by Ron Vallone. Look where Alomar stood. He stood out of the batter's box at the front of it. You know, if you hit a ball and your foot's out of batter's box, you'd be called out. He took a big step up and he was out of the batter's box with his front foot because Vallone is throwing so slow. That was a fastball. He guessed wrong in that, but uh... two ball, two strike count. <laughs> Left hander got him looking. Ron Vallone gets out of the inning as Alomar is called out on strikes, but. The Mets with three dying quail singles, two base runs. So Al Leiter goes to work with a three run lead here in the third inning. Mike Benjamin was at the plate, and Rios got caught stealing. So he'll lead it off here with Reese and Ballone, the pitcher, due up in the top of the third. Pirates and Mets last year were two of the struggling offensive teams. Pittsburgh was dead last in average. The Mets were next to last. The Pirates were next to last in runs, and the Mets were last. That one down the line is foul. The Mets have every reason to believe that's not going to happen this year. The Pirates, on the other hand, still got some problems. 
Benjamin with a two strike count. And Al Leiter a little bit outside. One ball two strike count on him. Well, Jack Wilson was supposed to start for the Pirates today but he's home his wife is giving birth to a baby and uh, he should be back for the game on Wednesday. That's why Benjamin is playing shortstop this afternoon. Their other infielder Pat Mears is on the DL as well is not with the team. Some uh, believe they're going to try and move him and may not come back on the roster. Three ball two strike count on Benjamin. They had to get rid of Derek Bell a big blow up in spring training with Bell <laughs> said some things that weren't very complimentary of the team or how he intended to play. So I'm going to shut it down. So he's gone. So the amazing thing about Derek Bell who played for the Mets. He hit about 211 for the Pirates. I'm, and he said if I have to contend to make this team this year I don't want to play. I'm going to shut it down. Yeah. Well he didn't have to worry about it. He didn't make the team. Jeez. Somebody in Pittsburgh wrote about Derek Bell that he was a true pirate. That he has it lives in a boat. That's one qualification right there which he did and does. He also steals money. <laughs> <laughs> well he's what he had a two year deal and they for like nine million dollars and they still owe him. Three two delivery to Mike Benjamin up the middle base hit. So there is the first hit of the season for the Pirates. Benjamin is on leadoff single here in the third inning. I want to remind you tonight on MSG Network catch the debut of the all new MSG Sports Desk. Join your hosts Gerd Menefee and John Gignon for all the latest scores news highlights NCAA championship game. That's all new MSG Sports Desk tonight at 10 30. And a fastball strike in the inside corner to Reese. Farmer Cincinnati Red. Pokey Reese, who two years ago was so valuable, they said, we will never trade him. He hit 224, they traded him. <laughs> it's an amazing story how he fell off. Out of the reach of Alfonso into left, Sedano coming to get it. And the Pirates have two on here in the third. Oh, Pokey Reese is turning his heater around, hitting the ball hard into left field. And the Pirates are with runners on first and second. Fonzie just missing that ball. Lev we'll MSG Super Camp for you. That's a super slow mo cam. We'll give you shots like that this year. And right here, Vallone is the batter, and he oh. is probably going to sacrifice here. Although Alfonso now he comes in and he's not he started way back and uh, broke him with a pitch. Trent Jewell third base coach came up to talk to Malone before the at bat. Leiter's getting the sign from Sedano at third. That's Jewett. See whether or not the bunts on now he may have been told just to take a pitch try and keep the infield guessing. Malone squares and that stays fair it's a base hit it's a foul ball by that much it was a wise decision it was a tough punt to field and to get the out of first base but it was a scary one as that ball didn't roll foul for a long time One ball, one strike count on Ballone. Trying to move the runners up with the Pirates trailing 3 0. A one ball, one strike count. Alfonso, even with a bag at third now. Now he charges, and now he puts that one to short. Alomar Ordonez rather makes the play himself. 
They faked the wheel and he stopped and the ball came right to Ray Ordonez. Well, so far the luck factor is totally against the Pirates in this game. And he faked the button and swings away and there's Ordonez right there to make the play. And Ordonez heads up knows exactly what he has to do. Unusual play for a shortstop but he makes it look like it's no big deal. Catches ball runs over to third base and makes the tag himself. How many times do you see a shortstop do that? Once. First That's down. right. I think that was it right there. Jeez. Here's Adrian Brown. 28 year old career minor leaguer but a 272 major league hitter bloops it towards short. Ordonez. Ordonez started to fake dropping the ball but the infield fly rule was in effect there. And the runners have to remain at first and second, and there are two down. The catcher, number 18, Jason Kendall. It's Al Leiter in the, on the left in the first inning, throwing a pitch, and now in the third inning. What are the things they look for from pitchers as the game goes on? Later on in the game, that's not so much now as when that arm starts to drop. That's usually an indication that a pitcher could be getting tired, but. In the first and third inning, that would not happen to Al Leiter. In fact, Al Leiter, one time in his career, threw about 170 pitches when he was a member of the Yankee staff. He was missing up high early in the game, and it looks like he's actually picked the arm up yeah. a little bit. Here's Jason Kendall with two down, runners at first and second base. Kendall grounded out his first time up. Leiter with a chance to get out of the inning now, with the first two base runners having reached. Now he's up high again, and a 2 0 count. Like anything else, you, you know, a guy like Al Leiter or any pitcher on opening day would be looking for that consistent release point. Hitters are looking for areas where they can get comfortable. Same with the fielders, although Ordonez looks extremely comfortable. Leiter unhappy with himself. 3 0 count. He talked to himself after that pitch, missed down low. He's trying to adjust here, trying to make changes in location. He up high, and now that one down low. 3 0 count two down see if the green lights given to Kendall who had 53 RBIs last year it was not at a 3 1 count I think when it be when it's a mechanical problem it's up to the pitching coach to pick it up catchers can't pick it up maybe another pitcher can pick it up but if it's a mechanical problem Al Leiter would know and if a pitching coach can make a small quick suggestion as you look at Leiter gets that leg up in the air and comes around and it's frustrating early on when you've lost that release point but right there the lighter comes back and now it's three and two. Al's a very smart pitcher if he's having a mechanical problem he would know. Well it's a good pitch for Kendall to hit. Don't know why he took that mm. one. Up. Three ball two strike count two down runners will be going. With Reese and Valone the base runners. Three two delivery a little chopper lighter. And off the bag didn't get him in a run scores good base running by Pokey Reese he never stopped lighter will be charged with an error as he pulled Mo Vaughn off the bag and the Pirates are on the board lighter had some trouble getting the possession of the ball he makes a wide throw on a good try to get to it and get back to the bag. And just couldn't do it. Geez, he looked like he got that back. He missed, he got, got he missed back. the base. Yeah. Well, the error by Leiter will keep the inning alive. With two down, Ramirez. Runners at first and second. And a strike on the inside corner. Well, one thing first baseman will work on is their footwork. Here's Leiter throwing the ball off the base, but watch Mo Vaughn coming back with that right leg. He didn't get the base. Not even close. Nope. And Kendall with good speed getting down that line. Lighter up high with it again. And a one ball one strike out. A very dangerous hitter right here. Ramirez had a 300 season last year. And uh, drove in 112 runs. He's got two on here against Lighter with two down. Chased one that was up and out of the strike zone. Ramirez, the guy with a lot of power, drove in a lot of runs last year. <laughs> player, very good offensive player. Two down, lighter. 
Ramirez really jumping out at lighters pitches here in a one ball two strike count. Below on the base runner at second base. Kendall on at first reaching on the air. Reese coming around to score from second. Said ball was hit he was going. And a 3 1 ball game now. A couple of hits in the inning two on the board in the ball game for the Pirates. Bobby Valentine's club with a lead but they've not been sharp. And that misses inside and a two ball two strike count. Kevin Young waiting on deck the cleanup batter. Runners in scoring position a very fine 379 last year. Here's the 2 2 delivery to him and again lighters up high and 3 2 lighters starting to pile up the pitches even though he's walked only one. 3 2 count two away Charlie Huff the pitching coach 57 pitches thrown and we are in the third inning. Oh, the runners will go again. 3 2 pitch. Struck him out. First strikeout of the game for Leiter. A run in unearned, but it was the error to Leiter that allowed it. A couple of hits and two left on base. We take advantage of the little things that happen. Well, the Mets with a 3 1 lead have done that so far in this game. Well, the luck of the Pirates is certainly not getting this game so far. And this is the first of the hits. Mike Piazza against the big shift that was on. Gets a base hit on that blue bit there. And now another one in center field. This one was by Alomar. By Alfonso, I should say. And then the following blue bit. And the Mets come up with the 3 1 lead of the ball, which has now gone down to screen one. Mulvain. Coming to the plate after striking out his first time up. Four strikeouts for Ron Ballone in the game. But he is trailing. Three to one. Vaughn, Piazza, and Alfonso do up. And Vaughn will foul that one back. The operation, there's Piazza on deck. The Ketmo Vaughn out, the reconstructive surgery on the biceps and the left arm. And uh, he said in California when it was done that they rushed him back and it continued to be a problem. It's not been a problem this spring. The shift on Benjamin with plenty of time makes the play. All right, Mike Piazza's last at bat. Sequence of pitches. Piazza looks very comfortable at the plate, taking that pitch outside. And then he took that strike over the higher plate. He takes a, a slider inside and fouls the ball back. He eventually bloops a ball down the right field line, and he picked himself up a single. Mike was watching the ball along with everybody else here at the ballpark and ended up on first base. But that's a pitch sequence as he hits that ball hard back right. to the line. Back to the mound and below the play and two down here in the third inning. The third baseman, number 13. Edgar right off the end of the bat. But he didn't throw it at the pitcher, out. though. That is true. You notice that? So he didn't throw it at the pitcher. Referring back to a pitcher throwing a bat at Mac No, no. Yet? Oh, no, I would never you do that. Oh, no. no. Okay. Two down, Edgar to Alfonso. Alfonso had a single and scored in the second inning. Showed Bunt took the strike though. Below is just trying to get out of an inning here with out throwing 15 or 20 pitches. He's the only pitcher in Major League history to pitch for seven big league teams before he got a chance to pitch on opening day. Con Ballone. He was just hoping someone was going to give him a contract. Well, he got one. There he is. One one delivery. Alfonso to left field. They were playing him deep there. Rios will have to play it on a hop and a base hit. Two for two for Alfonso. Well, one of each. A boot Number hit the center field and a line drive of a real tough pitch to hit right here. 
he golfs this one for the line drive to base it to left field. It's called going down and getting one right there. Here's Jeremy Burnett hit by a pitch scored. And the Mets three run second inning. Strike one on a slider down and away to him. Alfonso with Young the first baseman off the bag there as well. The long throws it away. Down to second base Alfonso. Error on Balone. And the Pirates using the same play that Valentine uses. Playing the first baseman off the bag and he goes back to the bag and signal. And the pitch first base is thrown away. So that will give Jeremy Burnett's an RBI chance as that one out of the reach of Young. Oh one count with two down. He does take a big cut doesn't he. Burnett's a former New York Mets player. And pretty coming into his own while playing for Milwaukee. 100 RBIs last year. O2. Tried to go the other way with that off speed pitch as they've got the shortstop, Benjamin, way over towards second base, giving Burnett's the shortstop hole. See that big hole there between third and short. Outfield has swung the other way. Center fielder Browns moved over to left a little. Alfonso off second base in the 0 2 delivery. Foul back again. Two strike count. Alfonso, wary of Benjamin moving in behind him. And that misses outside. One ball, two strike count on Jeremy Burnett's. Well, Ballone had a chance to get out of this inning. Just a few pitches thrown, but that has gone asunder after he got the first two outs. Pick off at second. No throw made. Two delivery and Burnett's to second base. Boogie Reese over to Young, and that'll do it. Burnett's is retired. So the Mets no runs, base hit error. And the Aflac trivia question 1962 who recorded the first hit in Mets history? Ralph was there. I was there, but uh, I don't think I know that. Was Richie Ashburn on the club? Uh, he was on the club and let off. I would say first home run was Gil Hodges. I remember that. I'm a little more into home runs than singles. I, I understand that. Well, we'll find out a little later on. Now Leiter goes back to work inside and low. The young has struck out his first time up. Leiter with a strikeout and a walk so far. 3 4 and 1 for the Mets, 1 2 and 1 for the Pirates. Inside corner doing that time, 1 and 1. Let's yeah. see, they had uh, Hobie Landreth caught the game. Casey said you got to start with the catcher. If you don't have a catcher, you have a lot of pass balls. See, Casey knew. And at first base was Hodges, second base was Neal, Charlie Neal. Shortstop was Edo Chacon, third base, Don Zimmer. Uh, Frank Thomas in left. 
Ashford in center field and right fielder as well. So there's a real chance one of those guys had the first hit. So one of those had the first hit. Got it down to eight. Unless Pit it was the pitcher. Pitcher was Roger Craig. Now, Casey Dingle named all those players in a monologue with Lindsey Nelson. And he went around just like I did. First, second, third, and around, around the infield. And then they got the right field, and they couldn't think of the right fielder's name. And he said that that fellow plays for the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds. He knew who it was. He'll ring a bell, and that's his name, Gus Bell. <laughs> that's word association. And word, yeah. Armando Rios, three strikeouts, by the way, for Leiter. Correct myself, because he's gotten uh, young twice. And he struck out Ramirez to end the last inning. Rio shows bunt takes it away. You're talking about home runs and Ralph Kiner. We're looking at a couple of the pirate records. And Ralph Kiner still holds two season records for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Rios a chopper. Lighter. Two down. See if you can figure out. Which two records you think Leiter uh, Ralph has in a single season? You take a look at our Delta schedule. Well, it's Pittsburgh on Wednesday. You have both day games, Wednesday and Thursday. And then you have the games coming from Atlanta, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Two night games and a day game. It's a tough road trip to start with on the road. Line of the first uh, major opposition. Two down here, one ball, one strike count on Wilson. One of those records, Ralph holds, you would expect 54 home runs in 1949. Still the single season mark for the Pirates. The other one, and Ralph didn't know this this morning when I asked. 137 walks in 1951. Still the single season pirate record for base on balls in a year. You're still there, Ralph, in the book. Well, I've been gradually going out of that book. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? Two ball, two strike count on Craig Wilson. Infielder, outfielder, catcher. He's a right fielder today. The Pirates are thinking of putting him behind the plate and moving Kendall to another position, but Kendall wants to catch, so Wilson finds himself in right field. Hit seven home runs as a pinch hitter last year for the Pirates. If he can hit home runs, you want him in the lineup. Pirates don't have enough to go around. Two ball, two strike count, but two down. That's leading at three to one. And lighter. Where did that hit? It's Piazza's glove and maybe the end of the bat. Piazza's glove. Hit the heel of the glove and bounced out. Two ball, two strike count. Each pitcher retired the side in order in the first inning. <laughs> That one blooped down the left field line. Sedeno can't get there. And with two away, Craig Wilson is on with a single here in the fourth inning for Pittsburgh. Boy, we have really seen the dying quail around this ballpark today. This is a dying quail right off the inside part of the bat. And the time runs now at the plate. Two down and Mike Benjamin, 36 year old shortstop, 235 career hitter, takes the strike. He singled in the third inning. Surprised the Pirates wouldn't try to push a bunt towards Mo Vaughn in a given situation, trying to bunt for a base hit and make Mo move a little bit just to test him. He had that pulled hamstring in spring training. Let's get out later, left handed pitcher. It'd be a pretty good foot race to first base. For example, a guy like Benjamin with less than two outs. Push the ball and see if he can beat out a bunt base hit. 
got to believe we're going to see that. Yeah, if, if scouts were watching the Mets at all in spring training, they would have to try that. Benjamin reached and a two strike count. This would be an ideal ball club to do it with because the Pirates, you have a few guys in the ball club that are real good major league hitters, but the others, questionable. So if you push a ball, you have decent speed. You get a chance of picking yourself up a bunt base hit. 0 2 count with two down, runner at first base. Lighters up to 75 pitches already. We're only in the fourth inning. So the Mets bullpen will be called on today. Here's Reese. Bobby Valentine. One of the issues with the Mets spring training was that bullpen. Towering pop up. Sedano glasses down. Battles the glare a little bit and puts it away. No runs. Base hit. One left on. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Opening day. I like trivia question. 62. Who uh, recorded that first hit? In Mets history, as the Mets celebrate their 40th anniversary, Ralph. And Gus Bell, that's his name. He'll ring a bell. And Gus Bell, one time outstanding player for the Pirates, and later on traded to us. Uh, mm -hmm. She may have a ticket cool. from that game in her hat there. The, man, the Mets were rained out the first game. It's a good thing you wore it because the team got stuck in the elevator. Not the whole team, but a lot of the team. And couldn't get out of the elevator to get to the ballpark. Right there, they should have known it was going to be one of those years. Jay Payton leading it off. The Mets lost their first nine games of the season. And after those nine games, the Mets were nine and a half out of first. And how could that be? Because the Pirates won their first ten games in that same period. about Jay Payton needing a lift for his career with the Mets. He gets it with a home run opening day. Take another look at that home run. Payton gets around that ball and hits the ball I believe over the second fence out there in left field into the tent area where they had a party before the ball game. But what a lift for the Mets and especially Jay Payton. That's what the Mets need from Payton. Look at that. Look at the head down on the ball. Head of the bat out there. Good swing, huh, Ralph? Very good swing, and it came off the fastball. Thank you. He now is driven in two runs. His first time up, he batted with the bases loaded and drew a walk. That's first home run of the 2002 season. He had eight last year, and he really crunched that one for Numero Uno in the year and a 4 to 1 Mets lead now. Five hits off Balone. Maradonias takes the strike, three and one. This is Ray Ordun. This is seventh consecutive opening day. And that one goes back to the screen. He is on with a free pass. Second given up by Valone. <laughs> Jay Payton still smiling over there. With the long ball here at home before the sellout crowd on opening day. The Melon, the Bullpen now for the Pirates. And if they have a strength this year, that middle relief may be it. <laughs> I love that hat. Here's Al Leiter, Pirates playing for the bunt. Trying to get that first sacrifice down again. He struck out trying to bunt first time up. Malone got it in. Popped up. Kendall started out. The ball was behind him. 
<clears throat> I talked about Al Leiter before how Al struggled last year with that sacrifice bunt and once again fouling the ball off here he tried it his first time up. Only one strike Kendall looking over to see how they want to play this defensively. Leiter is already squared up. Mentioned the Braves. They've got a 6 0 lead over Philadelphia. And Maddox scheduled to start. Did not. Has not. Tommy Glavin starting against Robert Person. And a 6 0 lead for Glavin over the Braves today. Maddox had that buttock muscle problem. Kept him out of the start. Yeah, strained his buttock muscle. One strike count and lighter did not square around that time and the pitch ended up inside anyway one ball one strike count. If Ron Valone's your opening day starter and it goes like this it's going to be a long year for the Pirates. They're expecting it to be a long year no matter what. Yeah. One one delivery lighter. Play at second. He still doesn't get a sacrifice. Ball dropped, but after the out is recorded. Gordonez is out of there. Fielder's choice for Leiter. <clears throat> Benjamin taking the throw. Well, Leiter bunting that ball on the ground, getting the ball back to Valone, and Valone opting to go to second base. And makes a strong throw, high throw, but Pokey Reese is able to make the grab. Should say Mike Benjamin. Now Roger Sedeno with lighter on at first base. Sedeno an RBI single and has struck out. He shows bunt, takes a strike on the outside corner. Oh, one count, one down. Foul back by Sedano. Want to remind you, Pepsi invites you to show up at Shea this Wednesday. Free admission to the Pepsi picnic area. The first 800 fans with an empty Pepsi can or bottle will be admitted. Wednesday. Game two. Here at Shea. 0 2 count on Sedano. Gets away. Lighter is going to stay at first base. That's with 13 new players on their roster. There's that picnic area, which is sold out for today's game, and where you can get in with that Pepsi can or bottle. First 800 on Wednesday. Bobby Valentine, working players in and out of the lineup during the spring, swung on and missed. So Daniels retired five strikeouts for Valone. We're in the fourth inning. Number 12, Roberto. That'll bring up Robbie Alomar. He has also been a strikeout victim and has grounded out. Mets went four and two against the Pirates last year. Well, two down, but for base. A little bit questionable right there, but at the same time, they got a powerhouse up lineup in back of them. And uh, the execution, although the ball was foul, was certainly a well disguised execution. Maybe Roberto Alomar is well aware of his problems. In opening day, so he figured he'll bunt for a base hit. Probably the only time he'd do it all season. Mm. 
hitless in his last 17 at bats on opening day longest current drought for any player in the major leagues hard to believe because Alomar is such a good offensive player. Malone's 0-2 pitch swung out and missed. Well one of the things talked about in the offseason was the Mets are going to score runs but what about the strikeouts where will they fit in well Malone's got six of them but Peyton's got the homer and the Mets have the lead. Fran Healy and Ralph Kiner I'm Gary Thorne and great to have you with us here for opening day first broadcast ever of a Mets game on the MSG network 50 on MSG 50 on Fox Sports Net and 50 on the WB 11 this year. Tuesday and Wednesdays all year will be MSG ball games. And right now a 4 1 Met lead here in the opener with Al Leiter looking for the opening day win. And the off speed pitch is in for a strike. Pokey Reese. Right here you see the release point of Al Leiter in the first inning and also in the fourth inning. Looks about the same to me. And that's good. Fouled off. One thing about pitchers when they drop down, they usually get wild high. Especially if they're fastball pitches. If anything, he's up a little bit. A little bit up, maybe. A lot of times a pitcher rushes. He's trying to throw so hard, he rushes his body out there, the arm doesn't catch up, and consequently the ball is high and out of the strike zone. Dallas never had an opening day win. It is his third career opening day. All of them coming of the Mets. He's 0 and 1 in opening day starts. One ball, two strike count. Ordonez. Reese retired, one away. <laughs> Mets with the jackets on today with that breeze blowing and John Franco on the left starting the season of course on the DL. He was real happy about the new seats they have in the bullpen. It is a very high raised observation platform. <laughs> Fouled off by Valone the pitcher he came in when the Mets arrived at Shea took a look up and said whoa this is good These are the best seats in the house. And the Mets also have new lights in this ballpark, and they're really good. Really bright, weren't they? Mm hmm. Had them on the other night. Malone, 0 and 2. Ralph, it must have been really something when you started playing baseball, when Major League Baseball started playing under the lights. And the lights were not good. Lights were bad. Mm -hmm. Alomar on the slow roller. Malone's out number two. The lighter's got a chance again for the one two three inning. The only time the leadoff batter reached was in the third when the Pirates scored their lone run. Adrian Brown is flied out and popped out. 28 year old center fielder. Oh for three. The only times he has faced lighter in his career. Al finished eighth in the National League and earned run average at 3.31 last year. Finished up with an 11 and 11 record with eight of the 11 wins coming at home where he was eight and three. What about going held up inside one and one. Pitched against the Pirates without a decision last year and his three and one lifetime against Pittsburgh. Jammed and a one ball, two strike count. Great shot here on opening day. New grass at Shea in the offseason. In great shape. Pete Flynn heads up the crew here. Does such a great job keeping Shea looking and playing beautifully. Leiter gets the out. Brown retired. One, two, three inning for Al Leiter. Gold glove. Ooh, about two mantles full for Alomar in second base. Book. Pete Walker, Timo Perez will help us this season. 
was unfortunate they didn't make the opening day roster. Bobby Valentine quote one of the toughest things managers have to do tell those final players to be released and we will see those players. That's Bob Murphy. The Mets are celebrating their 40th anniversary. Bob Murphy has been there for all of them. And so as our other original right here Ralph Kiner. Congratulations Ralph. 40 years of the New York Mets. Seems like two. Doesn't it? Yeah they really does. Wow. Except for those years when they finished last all the time. Yep. That seemed like 40 years that season right. right? Yeah you bet. There he is every single one of them Ralph Kiner both members of the Hall of Fame Ralph is a player and Bob of course is a broadcaster. Vaughn pops that one up Sun causing a problem along with the wind. Brown gets there though and puts it away and Mo Vaughn's 0 for 3 one away in the fifth. Right here the center fielder with the glasses down has a better shot at this ball. Left fielder. Rios uh, really couldn't pick that ball up all. Well it's an, a great shot of how tough it is out there with that sun. Sunglasses down glove up and you still have to peek around the sun to make the catch. Mike Piazza RBI's today Peyton's got two Ordonia's one and Sedano one. Wouldn't you know it. None of the middle part of the order has picked up an RBI in this 4 1 met lead. As far as the Mets are concerned, be perfectly all right. All the help you can get. The answer, you won't see him swinging a bad pitch like that very often, but the long got him to chase 0 2. Uh, Mike Piazza, a power hitter, hits for average and a tough guy to strike out. Great patience at the plate. The 0 2 delivery. Close, missed outside. One ball, two strike counted Piazza. Gardo Alfonso waiting on deck. The 1 2 is outside. Malone working out of that third base side of the rubber. It's not the way he started pitching in the game, is it? I didn't follow that. I, I, I don't know. Short hop to third. Good play by Ramirez. Piazza's retired. Two down. Well, Piazza's hitting the ball the best. He's usually prone to getting jammed. He got jammed here today and got a base hit. Pretty good swing right there, Ralph. Look at that. He's right on top of that ball. Of course, when you work on the third base side of the pitching rubber, you are usually trying to pitch inside. The yeah, outs out of there. And uh, Edgardo Alfonso, two for two. Three for three. Mm. Mets are going to be loving this. Edgardo Alfonso's third single of the day. Well, Fonzie, the big thing for Fonzie is he's able to turn on that ball with that bad back. And hit the ball hard into left field. He looked good in spring training, swinging the bat. He was hitting a long ball, and today he's got three hits, and right there slaps that ball into left field. Him being unhealthy last year really hurt this ball club. What do you think? He's healthy. Jeremy Burnett's two down. Burnett's. Hit by a pitch and scored and is grounded out. He's had more good swings in this game than he had maybe in the season last year. That back was really a problem. Point well taken. 100 pitches thrown by the starter for the Pirates, Ron Vallone now. They have had the bullpen active once, and here comes Spin Williams. Six hits, four runs. 37 out of the strike zone, 63 in it for Ron Vallone, the non roster player who made this team and ended up being the opening day starter. They are missing their number one pitcher, Ken, Chris Benson. Elbow problem. He's going to be out probably until May. He was out all last year. Yep. 
And as we said, the they only have one starter back in their rotation from last season for the Pirates this year, and that's Jimmy Anderson, who was the other who might have started this game, but did not. You sure you know Williams went out there to check after throwing 100 pitches as to whether or not Valone feels he can keep her going here. Jeremy Burnett's home run power, 30 or more homers, four consecutive years for Burnett's. Keep high speed pitch up high. Keep in mind, a lot of signs going on around out there. You get the infielders with signs, you take it, I take it. You get the catcher giving the signs. A lot of times they play off the signs. Benjamin says he'll take it. Young does not look very comfortable over there in those throws at first going back to the bag does he? for the past two years young has nursed sore legs once again you're going to look at the catcher give the sign Benjamin and Reese looking in Benjamin calling the shots Reese looking over taking the sign from Benjamin but young has been nursing bad legs for two years and they, he finally feels healthy he had a decent spring and he's more comfortable now because his legs are healthy. About six foot five inches, 225 pounds. He's in good shape now. 2 0 count on Jeremy Burnett's. And Valone's delivery to him, foul tipped. And it's 2 and 1. Valone trying to stay away from the inside of that plate, Peyton on deck. Because Burnett's can pull it, the wind's blowing out towards right. Well, the left hander can get one up in the air here. You got a shot at it today. Peyton has already had a homer the other way. Alfonso behind Young at first. Well, Bobby Valentine uses that move right there when the left hander doesn't have a good move to first base. I like it when the first baseman's as big as a Mo Vaughn or Kevin Young because you can block the view of the base run. Maybe his hesitation because he doesn't get a good view. He doesn't get a good jump off first. Right there, he's not blocking his view. I move out a little more. Swung out and missed. Two ball, two strike count on Jeremy Burnett's. I think the jury is still out on that, whether or not it's effective. You're not going to pick very many guys off first base with the first baseman going backwards. And Alfonso drawing throws is not a threat to steal here. I'm really kind of surprised they've made this many throws over to first yeah. base. Trying to there are two down as well and Valone's thrown over 100 pitches so you think he might want to go after the batter and try and get out of this thing. Especially a left hand hitter you got him two and two I, I throw him a breaking ball. Lefties hit 250. Runner goes here and it's fouled back off Valone last year. He threw him the breaking ball. He fouled it off. But if you get a guy who strikes out a lot, more than likely a lot of his strikeouts are on breaking ball. Here's the jump off first. That's a pretty good jump. Fonzie told himself, I'm going. And that's a big jump. Of course, Burnett's with two strikes has to swing that bat. Two and two, still two down. Alfonso, big lead over there. Young gets back for another throw. The runner just kind of goes with the first baseman. Whatever way the first baseman goes, the runner goes. Yeah, as soon as Kevin Young starts back, so does Fonz. And again, as, as we all know, we don't see many runners picked off with the first baseman that far off first. It's become fashionable to hold runners on like that maybe the past four or five years. Fans are getting restless. They've seen it enough. Well, on that play, there's a signal given by the pitcher as to when he wants to go over to first base, and the first baseman sees that, and that's how he knows which way to go on the motion of the pitcher. So if you're a smart first base coach, you steal the sign. Here's the 2-2 again, runner not going. Burnett's will be subject to a lot of those kinds of pitches because he's pretty well up there on the plate. Take a look at that again. Burnett's diving in fastball way inside. Now you wonder if Valone has a lot of confidence in his breaking ball. Will he throw it three and two? We've seen him do it to Mo Vaughn. 
with Piazza on deck. 3 2 delivery runner going, and he struck him out. Seven strikeouts. Opening day before this full house at Chase Stadium and our Jeep game summary. And for the Jeep game summary, Peyton, Ordonius, and Sedano in the third inning. Peyton, a solo home run in the fourth, and that right there could be extremely important. Get Jake Peyton on the right track early. How about Fonzie? Three for three, and Al Leiter showing that strong arm once again. Five innings, no earned runs for the Southpaw, who's throwing the ball hard. He was inconsistent early with his control. But he has to have one of the strongest arms of any pitcher. Pirates last year really struggled against left handers. They were 12 and 20 against left handed starters. The worst record in the league against Southpaws. Jason Kendall takes the pitch inside 4 6 and 1 for the Mets 1 3 and 1 for the Pirates. The honor and run as a result of an error by Al Leiter that allowed the Pirates to get on the board. Kendall takes it inside for a ball 2 and 0. Oh. One walk three strikeouts so far for the Mets 36 year old left hander. Two and one. Day off tomorrow and then the Pirates will be back for day games on Wednesday and Thursday. And tickets are available for those games. Two one delivery. Right field Jeremy Burnett's. Kendall retired one away. RMS Ramirez sold for two. He is grounded out and struck out. Ramirez still looking for first hit of his career off the left hander Al Leiter. One oh count. Leiter's just kind of settled in here with the Pirates getting that lone run in the third. Only one hit since. Rip foul. Getting ready for the season. Well dressed fans. The retired number. Tom Seaver was, was here at the ballpark for opening day. The starter of more opening day games as a pitcher than anyone in Mets history. Looked very relaxed. The opening day suits him fine. He was ready to pitch today. Ready to go. He did it 11 times. Foul back. Ramirez with a two ball two strike count. There's the retired number for Tom. He could throw. Amazing story though when he was a youngster he really couldn't throw hard so he learned how to pitch to location. As he got older he got stronger got bigger threw harder and still could throw to location. Did you say he got as he got older he got bigger. Hey I'm yeah, not going to don't, uh... don't start don't start. <laughs> He went to join the Marine Corps. That's the thing that really changed his uh, body fat. Whoa, wait a minute. He started to eat better? <laughs> he ate faster. <laughs> a three ball, two strike count on Ramirez. I'm Seaver with 10 opening day appearances. Well, if you tell me the greatest exhibition of pitching is when he struck out, what was it, 10 in a row? 10 in a row, yes, right, against San Diego. Piazza coming back and has room. Let's check in with Matt Locke. Matt. Gary, as you know, when baseball resumed after September 11th last season, the singing of Take Me Out to the Ball game was taken away during the seventh inning stretch, replaced by God Bless America. Today, Forest Hills, Queens. Art Garfunkel will sing God Bless America. We know the fans in attendance here and those watching out on the MSG network will want to stay tuned to that is one of the nice things that happened at the end of last season's continued here in 2002. All right Garfunkel will be along to do that seventh inning stretch time Young gets hit by the pitch. 
So Young goes down to first base with two down here in the sixth inning. The left fielder, number seven. Each team has had a hit batter in the ball game. Lighters mm. coming up on 100 pitches now with the next one that he throws. There's Young down. Kevin Young diving into that pitch. One of the things you see with a those high leg kicks today more so than ever before take you a while to get that leg down if that balls inside you can't get out of the way of it you can't really jump too high with one foot in the ground <laughs> one right. off that's why that short stride you're better off if you get out of the way of the ball that's going to be a base hit Burnett's young will stop at second base so the Pirates again with two down get base runners on they did the same thing in the fourth inning the couple outs got a runner on now they've got two on here. Ball hit hard in the right field. You see Kevin Young stopping at second base. So Pirates now runners on first and second with two out. That's with a three run lead. That will bring up Craig Wilson. He's had one of the four hits off Al Leiter today. Last time up a single in the fourth inning. Pirates have runners at first and second, two down, with the Mets leading at four to one. And Wilson takes it up high for ball one. One oh delivery. Get hard and foul. As Fran mentioned earlier, Wilson has home run power with the pinch hit home runs he had last year. Seven. Tying the record, major league record that had been set by Dave Hansen in 2000. With seven. And those seven home runs, I'm sure, will get him an opportunity to play every day. If you're older, they pretty much pigeonhole, pigeonhole you as a pinch hitter. But if you're a young player, they try to get you in the lineup. And he is 25 years old. In 88 games, he hit 310 last year, his first major league season, and did have 13 home runs. 32 RBIs, not bad. We're going to find a spot for him, especially with a ball club like the Pirates. Two ball one strike count two down runners off first and second. Lighter comes inside to him and a three ball one strike count. And the Mets bullpen as Lighter goes past 100 pitches. Gets active Kane Davis and David Weathers. Weathers closest to you. This is an important pitch for the Pirates right here three one and you got to look fastball here. Down the line, Cedeno, foul ball. We talked about the report on Wilson earlier. He's a dead fastball hitter. As Ralph mentioned, Al's going to throw him that fastball. Why take a chance? You got a three run lead. So it's going to be power against power. And Leiter has, he throws a heavy fastball right there. Wilson pretty much getting that ball up on the hands. Fans applauding for a strikeout here to get the inning over with. Mayor of New York's going to be joining us in the next half inning. Two on here, three two count, two down. Runners will be going. And another one lifted foul. Leiter getting the ball in on those last two pitches to Craig Wilson. Usually when Al Leiter gets a ball in on a hitter, he's breaking the bat. Wilson pull that ball way foul. That means he's a fastball hitter right there. That's playing deep. 3 2 of the runners going. And Wilson goes down swinging. Kept that one down and away. Four strikeouts for Al Leiter, no runs. Base hit and two are left on base for the Pirates who trail this one. But world, we had a terrible tragedy. We lost a lot of great people. Uh, but we're going to recover, and I think, you know, we'll go on, and there'll be opening days, and the future is, is bright for our children, and that's what we got to focus on. Mayor of New York, Michael Bloomberg, joining us here. One strike count as the Mets have the 4 1 lead, and I've got. Balone out of there so we get the right hander on now and Jay Payton who delivered a home run his last time up for the Mets baseball fan from days back 
Well, I was asked, was I a Red Sox fan? I said I grew up in Boston, and then I told the reporter that I went to day camp with Warren Spahn's daughter. He'd never heard of the Boston Braves, didn't know who Warren Spahn was. <laughs> Ooh. And that'll be handled right there. We'll give you a chance to talk over your replay. Here's your first pitch. Well, that's my uh, split fingered uh, curveball. You'll notice it curved. Instead of left to right or right to left, it went up to down, but it's a curve nevertheless. Did you get an autograph? Um, I did not ask for an autograph from myself, but I will when I get home. Very good. You're a good guy not to do that on opening day with Mike out there. Ray Ardonia is coming up with uh, one away, and Ardonia takes that one to right center field. That wind blowing that way, and that's going to fall into no man's land. So Ardonias is on with a base hit and the Mets have a runner on this guy here did a little better with that with the bat maybe than you did pitching but I'm not sure. Well I think uh, you know when I grew up he was my hero so uh, maybe he'll give me a few lessons afterwards so you can teach my kids a little bit about hitting. Well after you're working and pitching I think you better come to me the hitting now. My youngest daughter was a big Little League player in the fourth grade, but fifth grade pitching she could never hit. So she went on to other sports. Now if she'd had you as a coach, it right, would have made yeah. a difference, you know? It would be good, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. All right, we've got Gary Matthews Jr. now coming to the plate. He'll be pinch hitting for Al Leiter. Hey, it's great to have you with us uh, on hand here for opening day, and uh, we hope we'll have a chance to see you again at the ballpark. I will come out a lot. and. Uh, you know this is uh, one of the great parts of New York City. Uh, it's great to be in Queens and uh, my predecessor was always at the Yankee games although he was here with me today. Uh, Rudy enjoys the Mets. I used to say to him do you go to Shea Stadium. He says yeah he says they always boo me he said they always vote for me too. <laughs> and in the end. <laughs> in the end. <laughs> Mayor Michael Bloomberg of New York thanks very much for coming by. Thanks. We uh, greatly enjoyed seeing you and we hope you enjoy the ball game. Thanks for having me. It's going to be a great game and uh, Mets are going to win. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Mayor of New York. Michael Bloomberg coming by to say hi here as the New York Mets have the 4 1 lead after throwing out the first pitch in today's game. Al Leiter's out of the ball game. Gary Matthews Jr. pinch hitting for him down the left field line. That's Rios. Tough chance and he got it. Wow. Runner back to first base is Ordonez. That's a tough play. Well, if that ball was caught in the World Series, like who was it, Gene Frito? Uh, no, it's uh, Sandy Amherst. And he, it was a famous catch going over in that corner. Who hit that ball when they made that play? You asked one too many questions. I'm sorry about that. That's a nice play right there. Was it DiMaggio or Yogi? Well, no, Jim Frito was the one that caught DiMaggio's drive to uh, left field. It was going to be a home run over the 402 mark in left center field. But uh, Ammo also has, uh, made that catch in the no hit game. I'm sorry, I asked that question. Anything else? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why that reminded me of that. Am no, I almost made that catch in the uh, when the Dodgers won the uh, championship, the uh, World Championship. Strike that question. Mike Lincoln on the mound for the Pirates in relief of Ron Vallone. There goes the runner. Throw down. Not in time. Stolen base. Ray Ordonez. Looked like a delayed steal for Ordonez. Take a look at it again. He, uh, straight away steal. And the head first slide. So a stolen base for Ray Ordonez. Got in there with a hand tag of the bag and Ordonez gets himself in scoring position with two down now against Mike Lincoln the right handed reliever. Mets up four to one. And a pitch taken for a strike on the inside corner as Cedeno turns around to bat on the other side after facing the lefty. David Weathers still up in the bullpen. I think I have to guess on who made the catch uh, by uh, hitting the ball. Uh, Yogi Bear, I think it was. Is it Yogi? Yeah. Lincoln with a 1 2 delivery. Mike Lincoln last year was with Triple A Nashville and the Pirates. Went 2 and 1 in 31 relief appearances. Worked only 40 innings last year. Out of the bullpen for Pittsburgh. 
One ball two strike count on Sedano and he's gone. Called out on strike Sedano retired third time. He has gone down via the K route. The Get up close features and interviews and recap the entire week's amazing Mets action. Mets inside pitch Friday at 6 on MSG. What are we going to see right here? We're going to see uh, Yogi Berra hit this ball down the left field corner and the catch by Sandy Ambrose. And that was a great play by Sandy. And that was in 1955 when the Dodgers won two to nothing over the Yankees that won their only World Championship in Brooklyn. Oh, Ralph, aren't you happy I asked that question? <laughs> now I am. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this, the play that reminded me of that play, and I don't know why, but it did. Similar plays, yeah. The great story about Sandy uh, Amos was that uh, Tommy Lasorda of the Dodgers, and now the manager of the Dodgers, and they were honoring the 55 Dodgers at Ebbets Field, and uh, Lasorda said to people who you know, of all the guys on our squad that year, he said, I was probably the last guy you'd ever think would manage the Dodgers. And Pee Wee Reese very subtly said, no, hey, we send the Ambrose. And Lasorda was taken aback by that. He said, why him? He said, because he didn't speak English. <laughs> David Weathers welcomes himself to the New York Mets with a strikeout of Mike Benjamin. Weathers on for lighter. Look at that last pitch, and the pitch is right on the corner. All you can do there is hope to foul it off or go back to the dugout. And Benjamin went back to the dugout. Look at that. Outstanding. Right on the money. You can't beat that pitch. Good target. Framed well by Mike Piazza. Okay, Reese, who has singled and scored the lone pirate run that came in the second inning on an error charged to L. Leiter, is now out of the game. Leiter went six, gave up one unearned run. Four hits, he walked one and struck out four. Pretty good outing. Yeah, I mean, L. Leiter had good stuff. Very good stuff tonight, or this afternoon, so that's important for the Mets. They got so far some nice production from Jay Payton. Fonzie, who was a question mark with that bad back, has three hits in this game. But Al Leiter, the story here. David Weathers is going to play a very important part in this bullpen. 32 year old right hander. Weathers pitching last season with Milwaukee and Chicago. By Mel warming up again, second time he's been up in the bullpen. Weathers held opposing batters to a 216 average last year. He ended up combined with four wins, five losses with the Brewers and Cubs. And he gets another strikeout. So Weathers, two hitters, two outs, two strikeouts. Made a perfect pitch on Benjamin. And look at that, right on the corner inside part of the plate. Now, of course, you get the shadows. And this is a break for a pitcher right now. You can throw out of that sun area into the shadows. Whoa. Too late with that telestrator. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't want to hit there. <laughs> that one down to third. Edgardo Alfonso's up with it. Play made to Vaughn. Keith Osick, the pinch hitter, retired. There it's third pitcher of the day. Joe Bimel coming out of the bullpen. Second straight appearance on the opening day roster for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Made his major league debut as a starter last year. Works out of the pen here, and Roberto Alomar looking for his first hit. 0 for 20 on opening days now, as he's had an 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Leads it off for the Mets in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Numbers four to the left hander Joe Bimo. Slow roller to short. Mike Benjamin diving head first, didn't get it. Well, we talked about uh, Robbie Alomar's troubles on opening day, and right there, putting the ball in play and diving into first base. So Robbie Alomar probably somewhat aware of it, and extra effort trying to beat out that base. And of course, they tell you you arrive at first base quicker if you do it standing up. I don't know if it's ever been proven because he arrived at first base in a hurry right there. I don't think the Mets want to see those hands no. being jammed uh -huh. into the bag, though, do you? No, you don't want to see him 
get injured. In fact, I think baseball today is more prone to encourage players to stay away from the head first slide. Unfortunately, it's going against the grain because the head first slide is the epitome of hustle. Supposedly. Supposedly. Mo Vaughn's old team, the Red Sox, are having some good time in Boston. They were behind in the third inning, eight to three against Toronto. They're now in the fourth inning. It's 11 to eight, Boston. That's Pedro Martinez. Vaughn down to first base, played by Young, and there are two down. So Vaughn retired. He's had an 0 for 0 for four today. Mike Piazza coming up. And you take a look at our Mercedes Benz batting average active career leaders. You see Todd Helton, 334, Garcia Parra, 332. Mike Piazza in the top five. How unusual for a catcher to be in any category like that, especially the batting average category. We're talking about getting hit by a pitch. We have the note today that Piazza hit four times during the spring, was never, has never been hit by more than three pitches in any season. But he got hit four times in spring training this year. And then, of course, made the point on that last one when he got hit of going after the pitcher that did it. 2 0 delivery. And that one misses from uh, Bimel. Mike Lincoln worked an inning, gave up one hit, and struck out one. Ballone went five, four runs, six hits, two walks, seven strikeouts for the starter, Ron Ballone. Piazza's on. Well, a game we televised from Florida. Here it is, Moda hitting Piazza. And Piazza sat in a dugout, waited for Moda to be removed from the ball game, and then started walking down the first baseline with him, and all of a sudden wanted to get closer so he could hear him, so he grabbed by the neck. Can you Mets do this? Still haven't had the official word from Bob Watson on whether anything will happen. I mean, the likely it is no. Well, I'll tell you, Bob Watson must be upset. He was overruled on a decision he made. So the judge was overruled. So here comes the judge. Doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> there goes the judge. Bob Watson, very nice guy. Outstanding player and would be a great judge. You, is that a promotion that you're asking for? For, uh, uh, yeah, for Bob, Bob Watson. I thought so. Pitching change by Mulata there, and the right hander coming on as uh, Edgardo Alfonso will be up with Mike Piazza on at first base after drawing the walk. The Mets have the 4 1 lead against the Pirates here in the opener. And Edgardo Alfonso waiting to come up. Is looking for a four hit day, Fran, as he's had three singles already in the ball game and has scored a run. Well, Fonzie, as Gary mentioned, picking up three hits. Right there, he muscles that ball into the outfield in the third inning. They throw him down and in. He hits a looper in the left field. And then later on in the ball game, in the fifth inning, he takes this pitch and it's a bullet in the left field. So Fonzie's got his stroke down. Here opening day at Shea. He has had as many as six hits in a ball game in 99 at Houston. Had a career high six hit day. I, I'm sure Gary that you know when, when somebody has an off year like Fonzie had last year especially when you have a back problem you know you have some doubters you know whether or not that back is that bad and maybe a player's getting older who knows so I'm sure the Mets were concerned but Fonzie comes out swinging this year he worked out hard all winter long. And he came out hammering the baseball here in the first game in front of a full house at Shea Stadium. We haven't got the attendance number yet, but 54,000, I would think, or more on hand here today. Sellout crowd. This should be, a, this should be an exciting ball club all year round. And if they can keep the team healthy, they should have a good ball club. They get the new faces. They got the old face right there, Fonzie coming on strong and if Fonzie can put together a year like he had two years ago he was maybe the best all around hitter on the Mets club two years ago he will face Sean Lowe out of the bullpen pitch with the White Sox last year was nine and four 11 starts and 45 appearances at an ERA of three six one 71 strikeouts 
thirty two walks last year Sean Lowe on the mound. He answers at first two down. Taken the other way and towards the line by Edgardo Alfonso and in the seats. Four pitchers now have been used in the ballgame by the Pirates. Burnett's waiting on deck. L. Leiter starting for the Mets. One on earned run over six on four hits. Pitcher of record for the Mets, Valone, the same for the Pirates. Alfonso takes the breaking ball. Didn't go after that one. One and one. Four runs, seven hits for the Mets. Lloyd McClendon, second season manager of these Pittsburgh Pirates. That one's going to be top foul. Pirates have had nine consecutive losing seasons. When they were good, they were very good. But when they're bad, they don't try to be good. 100 losses. Oof. And, and the teams Ralph Kiner played for really struggled. Ralph was the big drawing card. There's Bill Burton, who was an outstanding center fielder. Those nine losing seasons, only one other team has had a streak that long in the last 40 years and that's the Cubs they had 11 straight losing years 73 through 83 you expected it from the Cubs but yeah. not the Pirates Alfonso swings through that one and is retired so Lowe comes on gets the job done no runs no hits one base runner left on the Mets have left the runner on every inning except the first and they've pushed across enough to have the lead our time the circular Mets logo virtually unchanged since November 61 the choices for the team name besides the Mets the Rebels Skyliners good song good group the uh, <laughs> NYB's the Burroughs the Jets the Continentals another good group the Avengers and the Islanders but no it's Mets and it's not Metropolitans it's just New York Mets there you go. David Weathers retired the side in order in the seventh inning. He'll stay on the mound here. Adrian Brown leadoff batter is 0 for 3. The Pirates have had four hits in the game and they've all been singles. They've left five only two in scoring position in the game with the Mets having the 4 1 lead. One ball one strike count from David Weathers. A little easier to pick up that ball from the pitcher now because the shadow's all the way out there. Where is he? I don't know. You can't see the pitcher, but you can pick up the ball a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 1 1 delivery foul back by Brown. But certainly, uh, the Mets got a great day for opening day. The weather, they were predicting some rain, but boy, oh boy, what a day it's been. They're hoping for the same on Wednesday and Thursday afternoons here at Shea. So if you're thinking of coming out come on out and take a look at the new faces with the Mets 61 degrees at game time lots of sunshine warmer in the sun two big ball, ball. Two strike count big mall one of the new faces Robbie Alomar Sedano relatively new three ball two strike count on Brown. There's a new face on the mound. Yeah, David Weathers, you get Jeremy Burnitz, who was a baby in the organization. Now he's back. The Mets have 13 players on their opening day roster who ended last season with different major league team. And he walked it. Speaking of that next ball game, Wednesday afternoon, MSG Network, Mets and Pirates, game two. Geico Mets on deck at 12:30. Mets and Pirates, one o'clock. So join us Wednesday. Here on MSG Networks for Game Two. That's when the real season gets underway. Opening day is a special day, almost like playoff atmosphere. And by the way, the starters will be Steve Traxel against Kip Wells Wednesday and Thursday afternoon. Play will go to first. Sean Estes and Jimmy Anderson. Weathers gets the out. Brown goes down to second base. 
Well, you're going to go for the sure out when you have that three run lead. Did he have a shot at second base? Yeah, he had a shot, but you go for that sure out. There's one man down running around second base. You also, it's very important for the catcher when he calls that play to know the pitcher's ability defensively. You don't want to get burnt because you don't know your pitcher's ability defensively because you call the wrong base, you can set the tone for the opposition. Ramirez up with one down, runner on at second base. Top of the eighth inning, 4 1 lead. Obviously, an important inning for the Pirates here. Try and push across at least one run. They are fired from out of the ball game. They've got some long ball bats. That pitch is taken inside. One ball, one strike count. Mike Guthrie in the bullpen now. Randy Neiman, the bullpen coach, watching. Ramirez at the plate, only 23 years old. One of their great hopes for the future. 300 season last year at the plate. Slow topper to third, Alfonso. Vaughn takes that one on the other side of the bag. Runner moves up, but there are two down. And Ramirez, a big key to the ball club. If they're going to do anything, hits home runs, drives in over 100 runs, hits 300. If you look at Kevin Young, who's the batter now. Well, you see the Braves on top of the Phillies, seven to two. So Tom Glavin gets the victory. Greg Maddox did not pitch in that ball game. I wonder how Scott Rowland did. I wonder if he and Larry Boer were hugging or wrestling. That's going to be an interesting story all season long. Got to believe they start out poorly and Roland starts out poorly. It's going to get really ugly, huh? And of course, he turned down an offer of a at least reportedly it was an offer of 140 million in 10 years. Boy, oh boy. It's be nice to be able to turn that down. Take a look at that last pitch. Look at the way Mike Piazza catches that ball, gives the umpire a good shot at it. 0 oh, 2 delivery by Weathers and Young, who has struck out twice already, fouls it back to keep it at 0 and 2. You know, a lot of the, of the catchers who have caught years, years ago, you were taught to receive the ball with soft hands. Today, and I think it's even better today because they go out there with that stiff arm and they catch that ball and give the umpire a shot out in front. Take a look at Mike stiff arms this baby right here. Now he lets it get up closer to him. But when he wants to frame it he'll catch with that stiff arm. Boy Weathers impressive. Yeah Weathers looked very good. Al Leiter started this thing off today. He looked good and now Weathers comes in and he is setting down the buckles. Take a look at Mike Piazza catch that last strike stiff arm. To see all the amazing action at Shea this season. Secure your seats for a Mets 8-pack. Choose from the Power Pack, Champion Pack, Rival Pack, or the All-Star Pack. Each ticket package includes a Mets-Yankees game and a Mets-Braves game. For more information or assistance in purchasing a Mets 8-pack, call 718-507-TIXX. We'll see you at Shea. Mets face exciting day for him, friend, around the batting cage before the game. This is his first opening day at the big league level. Oh, it's always an exciting time, opening day. Even if you've played 10 years in the big leagues, it's an exciting time. Everybody down in the field, you can see the fans excited about opening day, the media down by the batting cage. The place was jam packed today, but Vance Wilson, very excited about opening day. A kid that fought off a lot of injuries. He was a big prospect for the Mets where the good news is in he's in the big leagues the bad news is Mike Piazza is the catch he's got to back up we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning Jeremy Burnitz hit by a pitch and scored 0 for 2 in the ball game Sean Lowe stays on for his second inning Mets with a chance to get the opening day win here at Shea Stadium Against the Pittsburgh Pirates. They are 25 and 15 in opening day games over the 40 year history of this team. David Weathers, outstanding out of the bullpen in replace of Leiter. That one by Burnitz is a foul ball. Well, Jeremy Burnitz knows 
One speed. Long ball speed. Look at that swing. Never cheats himself. Whew. Those big cuts. One ball, two strike count on him. Burnett's. Just about everybody's had a shot at striking out in this game. How about this Piazza guy? Piazza hasn't done it. How about Jay Payton, a home run this afternoon? Smoked it over the left field fence. Got him. Good breaking ball to get Jeremy Burnett's. Right over the top. Sometimes that ball that's above the waist is not necessarily a hanger. Jeremy Burnett says, give me that fastball. I want the fastball. I'm going to hammer the fastball. Look at the intensity. He gave me the curveball. Dreyfus. <laughs> what was that? That was a little uh, <laughs> preview of what's coming up. You did a nice job, though. Do you like that? You hit the wrong cough button. But there's nothing Works wrong with time. that. It's, it's opening day. Fortunately, that's all I said. <laughs> and a strike in the outside corner, Jay Payton. The homer came in the fourth inning. He's got a couple of RBIs. One came in a bases loaded walk in the second. Speaking of our Dreyfus play of the game, back to the fourth inning. Watch this bang. Opens those hips. Gets the head of bat out there and just rips that ball in the left field. So Jay Payton off to a good start this year with a long home run. The ball over the second fence out there into the tent area. One ball, two strike count on Payton. Ooh, hello. You know, Jay Payton's the only guy I've ever seen get hit in the head with a fastball and get up and charge the mound a couple years ago. Usually you get hit, you're worried about your health. And this was oh so close. That's a 93 mile an hour fastball. He's diving in with that high leg kick. We talked about that leg kick before. Sometimes you get that leg off the ground and that ball's inside. You can't get out of the way. Tried to go back outside with a breaking ball and buried it in the dirt. For a three ball, two strike count on Jay Payton. Donia's do up next. Mets hoping for a much better first month of the year. They were 10 and 15 last year at the end of April. That was the worst record in the East, in the Eastern Division. Did not help the cause as the season went along. Hoping for a better start. Three games at home, then they go on the road to take on Atlanta and Chicago. Bobby Valentine's Mets, an opening day win. Great way to kick it off, and they're up four to one. Another one high, and he walked it. So Jay Payton with the home run in today's game. We talk about how important he could be if he could utilize his speed in stealing bases. So with a three-run lead, you wonder will Bobby Valentine tell Jay Payton practice your steal, steal second base? Not a bad time to run. Jay Payton has speed. Not a big lead at first right now as Young throws over. It's funny he has that great speed might be the fastest runner on the team say in a hundred yard dash. But it takes that gambler's mentality to be a base dealer. You got to you can't be afraid to take a chance. Only four stolen bases last year in 104 games. And he's only a step off over there right now. Boy, if the Mets could pour on the speed with Sedano and Alomar and throw Peyton into the mix and put that opposition on their heels defensively. Ray Ardonez. How about this friend? The attendance today, 53,734, is the largest opening day crowd in franchise history. Great turnout for the Mets. In this place, you can't get another seat. And a huge crowd on hand for the opening day of a team that has 13 new faces. Ardonius takes it inside. 53,734 here today. That's Mark Johnson waiting on deck. He'll be the pinch hitter. 
coming up for Weathers. And the Mets blessed with a very decent day weather wise. Big house. 2 0 count on Ardonez with a one down. Peyton at first. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Brown up with it will hold the runner. So the Mets have two on and one down here in the eighth. Highlights. What was that? Did we got a shot of LaGuardia Airport. Nice shot. I'm assuming it was LaGuardia. It'd be tough if you had those plates someplace else. We know the cameras are high, but probably JFK <laughs> is out of the question. <laughs> All right, Scott Sauerbeck goes to work here. John Valentin coming to the plate. First plate appearance. He's got Peyton on at second base and Ray Ardonia's at first. Mets with a 4 1 lead. And Valentin for the Mets with one away. Valentin takes the pitch for a strike. This is a very new role for Valentin, who's had only four pinch hit opportunities in his whole career because he has been a starter. And a good one. A good player with the Boston Red Sox and unfortunately had an injury that set his career back. And as I mentioned a moment ago, he wants to play every day, and even if it takes going to a different ball club. A one delivery to him gets away, and the runners are going to move up. So Kendall reaching for it, hit the glove, and bounces away, and the base runners move up. Last pitch off the glove of Jason Kendall. Kendall with the knees on the ground. Had a tough time getting up high enough to make the grab. So now you get Valentin with runners on second and third. Sedano's so on deck. Rolled a wild pitch. You saw Kendall start to move towards the inside part of the plate, and the ball went the other way. Infield moved in, 1 1 delivery. Again, up high and away, 2 and 1. Surprisingly scored a wild pitch, really. Puts two in scoring position for Valentin now. Two ball one strike count. Valentin swings through it. Two ball two strike count. 35 years old led the American League in doubles with 47 back in 97. Only played 20 games last year with Boston because of injuries on the DL left knee. Rehabbed in the minors a while. 2 2 pitch to him. Valentin, another strikeout victim. Well, Valentin out in front. Uh, an off speed pitch. So runner still on second and third, and two men are out, and Roger Sedania with good speed is the batter. That's uh, 11 Mets who have struck out in the game today. Been a strikeout day. Lighter with four and David Weathers with three. So seven Pirates have struck out. Lead off batter Cedeno. RBI single came in the second inning. He has struck out three times. Two called, one swinging. He's got two on here. 30 year old left hander Scott Sauer back on the mound for the Pirates. Here in the eighth, and he misses outside, 2 and 0. So Daniel's got the RBI opportunity right here. Put this ball game all but put it away for the Mets. 3 and 0. I don't think you work around Sedano to get no. to Alomar. No, Alomar on deck. Sedano with good speed, the batter batting from the right side of the plate. You better take your chances with Sedano right now. And he walked him on four straight pitches. Roberto Alomar, bases loaded. Spin Williams on his way to the mound. Assuming all he's going to do is try to calm the south part down. Best way you can do it, you walk out and say, don't worry about it. You're going to face one of the best hitters in the game. 
with the bases <laughs> loaded. <laughs> but just take a deep breath. Comforting thought, huh? Oh, boy. Take a look at Blimpy. American League scores. Look at that game, friend. Fifth inning, 22 runs. Pedro Martinez. I bet he's no longer in the game. Yes, I guess. <laughs> I think he came out the third. Probably the first. They were behind. The Red Sox were behind eight to three in the third inning. It's 11 to 11. That's got to be cause for concern up there, Pedro Ooh. Martinez, because Martinez, when he's healthy, he's almost unhittable since joining the Red Sox. Roberto Alomar last year with the bases loaded went four for eight did not have a grand slam home run he's got the bases loaded here two down and takes the pitch for a called strike one and one he didn't think so Alomar finished up with 20 home runs and 100 RBIs with the Indians last year. 1-1 one, one pitch to him, a one ball, two strike count. Not close on that one. He was fooled. 1-2 count from the left-hander. Roberto not taking that good swing we saw him using in Florida. So this must be his opening day swing. We talked earlier about how he has struggled opening day. Look at this. Feeling for the ball. That's not Robbie Alomar. I mentioned how he has struggled in a few the past few opening days. One two delivery to him and Alomar loops that one towards right center. Base hit. And the Mets will get two more. Alomar, it's been a day of dying quail for the Mets. And a most productive one. As Gary mentioned, a lot of looping balls dropping in today. And this one off the bat of Robbie Alomar to drive in two big runs. Hokey Reese going out and getting that ball, but the Mets score two more times. You'll take a look at Matt Galanti, third base coach, waving him in. And holding him up. And Big Moe's the hitter. Six to one lead now for the Mets. Mo Vaughn finally gets out of that 0 for 0 for 21 on opening day. Alomar rather, and gets two RBIs. Mo Vaughn. Vaughn's had the 0 for today, 0 for 4. Fans want to see the long ball. They're all standing and chanting Mo. Runners at first and third. He's got a chance of being a very popular player here in New York. I love the big stuff. One ball, one strike count. Attended Seton Hall University for three years, of course. Graduated from Trinity Pauling Prep in Pauling, New York. Say he has some size. 6'1, 275. One ball, two strike count on Vaughn. Saw so Mike Piazza on deck. He had a base hit in his game. He's a 287 career hitter against. Left handers. Yeah, Mo's had a solid uh, career batting average wise, about 295. One two delivery to him, down to first and foul. Big Mo's dad had a tremendous influence on the youth. Norwalk, Stanford, Connecticut area. His dad was an educator. Calvin Murphy, great basketball player with the Houston Rockets, told me his. That most father had a tremendous influence on him. Mo's dad coached against Bobby Valentine when Bobby was a schoolboy standout in Connecticut in football. One two delivery to him. Look out. Ripped back into the seats. The 
look at the shift yeah, back. See that shift yeah. all year, huh, Fran? They're going to do that to Mo Vaughn, move that in infielder by, almost behind second base. But yet they're shading him to hit the left center. The center fielder's move. That's a pretty interesting alignment right there. Shortstop is playing him to pull. The center fielder's playing him to hit the ball the other way. Pull the string on him. Armando went out and got the award. Steve Phillips, along with Bob Weirs, who represented Roll Aids, gave the award. And Bobby Valentine was called out. And Armando Benitez handed Bobby the award. Bobby went down to check on him in his homeland during the offseason. Gets the walk. So Rios on with a leadoff walk here in the ninth inning. Right fielder, number 36, Craig Wilson. Only two walks given up by Met pitchers today. Good work by Weathers. Two innings, three strikeouts in relief of Leiter. Here's Craig Wilson. His hit came in the fourth inning, a single. Mariano Rivera, by the way, who won the Rolex Leaf Man Award in the American League at the Baseball Writers' Dinner, gave the award to the fire de to the uh, members of the fire department, New York Fire Department. Said they are the real closers. Among active relievers, third best save percentage figure. Well, he, he's a dominating pitcher. Unfortunately, those two, uh, we blew two big leads last year. It was very tough on Armando Benitez, and that's what he was remembered for, but he dominated last year. Down to second, uncontested Rios. A two strike count on Wilson. And he fouls that one back. Pretty good battle here. Wilson is a, a dead fastball hitter. We've been talking about that throughout the game. And Armando Benitez rearing back and firing. Mo Vaughn, pitcher Benitez covering. Turner moves over to third, and there's one away. Look at this. The sun coming down right in the eyes of the outfielders, and then you'll see the outfielder with the sunglasses put his glove up to block the sun, and then they peek around the sun to catch the ball. That's how tough it is out there. He's got his glove up on every pitch, trying to see the, the delivery, and hoping if anything comes off the bat towards him, he'll see it. Yeah, he's guiding his that. eyes. That's tough, boy. When you when you have to have your glove up to see the pitcher throw the ball. He's going, come on, Benitez, strike him out. That's right. Just throw that fastball. That's a great shot. And of course, a fly ball. But to left. So Daniel's got it. Runner will tag. Rios will score. Nunez gets the RBI and a sack fly. Sun not as tough on left fielder now, but we saw Sedano out there earlier fighting off that sun. Second and our shot from our three, super cam. Degrees. Look at that. Sedano, no sunglasses. He said, this is a piece of cake. So the MSG super cam watches the ball right into the webbing of the glove. Well, I, you know, it's from last year, those two outings against the Braves, but now they're behind them as they all stand here at Shea Stadium cheering them on. Mets need him. One of the most dominating relief pitchers in all of baseball. Mondo Benitez trying to finish it up. 43 saves out of 46 last year. This is not a save. 3 2 delivery. Popped up. Ordonez Alfonso. Alfonso. Oh! Somebody, and then nobody. Yeah, somebody heard something that wasn't said. I think it was, I got it. Big crowd on hand, a lot of noise. You know, it looked like Ordonius was yelling to Fonzie. That's what happens when you just don't understand Spanish. Not, not there. That's not a problem. <laughs> so Benitez is going to try and do it again. 3-2, two, two down. And he got him in the mess.
Mets win it six to two. Well, in front of a big crowd, Armando Benitez comes in and shuts the door. Al Leiter, opening day pitcher, gets the victory. David Weathers came in, throwing the ball well. The offense was in pretty good form today. Home run by Jay Payton, three hits by Alfonso. And Bobby Valentine looks too relaxed. He's probably been relaxed throughout the ball game, knowing Al Leiter had that ball. So Al Leiter now 1-0 on the season. Mike Piazza with the hit. That guy right there had a long home run over the second fence out there in left field into the tent area. So Daniel opening day, big mole Vaughn. So as Gary mentioned, the biggest crowd, opening day crowd in the history of Shea Stadium. The winning pitcher, Al Leiter. Third baseman to hold the fort until Drew Henson is ready. This afternoon, I asked Mets general manager Steve Phillips about the deal. So Steve, he goes, who's on first? What's on second? Third base, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either right now. But I think that, look, I think this is a trade that gave us some flexibility. I think we wanted to try to add some thump to our outfield. We think David Justice fits us better right now with how we want to configure the club. And, and as we made this move, it gave us some flexibility. So is it possible that Fonz could return to third base or Relaford? Well, I think that, that Edgardo's uh, preference is to stay at second base. And I think we're going to try to do what we can to honor that preference. The outfield is Shinjo. Lawton and Justice. What happens to Peyton? Well, we're really uh, dealing from a position of strength right now with numbers in the outfield. I think that uh, it's a year where there is a lot of interest in outfielders, and I think that, that David does bring us that certain veteran presence in left or right field and gives Bobby some options there. Now, one of the great things for Justice and Ventura, neither guy has to move. Mets fans are going to really like this one. Yeah, you know, some people criticize the Mets for not getting too active last year in the offseason, but I think they're being extremely active, and people are going to be very excited about this summer. Calling him the finest second baseman in baseball history, although I'm sure Joe Morgan and Rogers Hornsby will have a little something to say about that. But whatever, he is certainly the finest in the game today. And as of this morning, Roberto Alomar is a New York Met. Matt Lawton, among others, is headed to Cleveland, and we are pleased to be joined this evening by Met skipper Bobby Valentine, who is with us from his restaurant in Corona, Queens. Bobby? What's the special tonight? <laughs> You're the special, Brad. Oh, Actually, we have a Piazza <laughs> special, soon to be an Alomar double play. I like the way that sounds. Congratulations, yeah. first of all. It's a great get for you guys. This is a, an A-level talent, someone who's going to help you on offense and defensively. Yeah, when people say he's one of the great second basemen of all times, it's because you could come to a game, you could see him play defense and win a game, run the bases, win a game, hit a home run, bump for a hit. He really does it all. Here he is making a great backhand to play and um, you know he's fun to watch he has a flair he's a good-looking guy he has a smile and uh, he's a New York Met so I couldn't be any happier is that one of the criteria him being a good-looking guy I know he's I know he's married to Mary Pierce and all that stuff I didn't know that was on your checklist of things to do. I think it helps for the fans when they're coming out it just gives a nice look to the great play yeah well we it's good to know that you're thinking of those things obviously nothing's in stone until April but it is is it your that Edgardo Alfonso, who is your second baseman, will now move to third. How comfortable is Edgardo with that? How comfortable are you with that? Well, I know he can play third base. He's a, he's a great third baseman, but he's also a great second baseman, and I want him to be comfortable. I want him to be comfortable for his career. His career has been exclusively with the Mets. He's played third base extremely well. He's played second base extremely well, and um, we're hoping that after next year, which is his free agent year, which, you know, in today's time, he really is a big big year for players mm -hmm. and uh, let's hope he's comfortable. I, I believe he will be. He's a terrific person and one of the great players in the game of baseball himself. The people in Cleveland and Baltimore where Robbie Alomar has played know him to be a quality human being. They know that, that he's an all-star and about the 336 average and that he's a good teammate. But I think when, when some people in New York hear the name Roberto Alomar, they think of that incident in 96 with, with the spitting and John, Her John Hirschbeck. In your mind, is it fair to say that was just a blip on the radar screen of an otherwise quality individual? No, totally. Um, you know, I played with uh, um, Robbie's dad, Sandy, back in the 70s. Sandy Alomar Sr. is uh, is the top of the line. He's a gentleman all the way. Robbie hasn't fallen too far from the tree. And um, today, he's raising money for John Hirschbeck's 
uh, Families Charity, which uh, is fighting against a dreaded disease that uh, some of John's kids have been stricken with. So, yeah, he learned from mistakes, as all of us should do. And I think he's going to teach a lot of people how not to make mistakes and how to enjoy the game of baseball. Bobby, thanks. Five seconds. Bonds, Alou, still hope for that? No? Yes? I st I'm still hopeful to do everything we cool. can to improve our Hey, on April 1st against the Pirates in the Subway Series with the Yanks. Already sold out. Forget about that. Meanwhile, players are down in Florida for spring training this week. CBS 2 Sports Director Brett Haber is down there as well. And his live reports begin. One. They picked up some huge bats. Now, if that pitching would just hold up. But why should I talk about it when CBS 2 Sports Director Brett Haber <laughs> is in Port St. Lucie with day two of Met Spring Training? Brett. Uh, hi there, guys. I wish I could tell you. There's better weather down here, but Florida is just gross. I think you've got it better up in uh, New York. And, and speaking of the Mets, let, let's be honest, last year was pretty much of a, a disappointment for them. Coming off the Subway Series in 2000, they missed the playoffs entirely and finished only two games above 500. But this year, there is a distinct feeling around this Mets camp that things are going to be different. Vaughn, Alomar, Cedeno, Bernitz, Piazza, and on and on. It is a lineup any team would be ecstatic to have, and the guys who seem to be most excited about the new Mets bats are the Mets pitchers. It is nice knowing that if your lineup has the capability of banging out some runs and you happen to give up a two-run homer to Vladimir in the third inning, you don't feel like the game is lost. And unfortunately, last year, we had a season in which we had a tough time scoring. Our job is to go out there and, and keep the team in the game. Um, I don't think it should be too difficult this year considering we're going to probably put some runs up on the board. But at the same time, there's going to be a lot of one-run ball games and close ball games that we need to come out on the, on the winning side of. As for the lineup that will try to achieve that, really only one starting job is open this spring, and that is center field. And the competition between Jay Payton, Gary Matthews, and Timo Perez has begun. Do you relish the opportunity to come to spring training and be able to compete? I do. You know, I'm in great shape and uh, prepared really well for this upcoming season. And, uh, you know, I feel great. You know, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, right now, you know, it's, it's a situation where if I have a good spring, I like to think I'm going to be the guy to get the first shot out there. But, uh, you know, it's one of those situations, too, where uh, we got a few other guys in the wing. So uh, if one guy is not getting the job done, then uh, somebody else is going to get a chance to do it. For the rest of the Mets, spring is simply time to ramp the body back up and time for opening day in five weeks. But if you've never been to a New York spring training before, complete with huge crowds and swarming media, it'll phase a player. Give us a breakdown on Mo, what kind of cat is he? Mo, I was talking to him today. I think he's a little overwhelmed at first, you know. There's a lot of a lot of excitement. He's like, man, you know, I mean, you have like 3,000 people here today. I mean, so just for a workout. So imagine the kind of excitement and the buzz that we have. Uh, Mo Vaughn, by the way, checked into camp weighing a, shall we say, robust 270 pounds. It may sound like a lot, but we asked Mo, hey, what's your actual playing weight? He said, oh, 260. 260. Could play linebacker. God bless him. We'll, uh, we'll have more at 6 o'clock. For now, we're live in reasons why Sean Estes he joined the Mets from San Francisco this offseason had a bit of a down year in 2001 but he is a former 19 game winner and listen to what Mets ace Al Leiter has to say about him this guy is legitimate I believe he's going to be the 97 pitcher that he was when he won 19 games at the 3 RA he's got great stuff Ernie, 41 year old. Whether or not to undergo Tommy John surgery, knowing that without the surgery, he may not pitch again. I am going to uh, explore all options, speak to all the medical people that I need to speak to. When I'm ready to uh, make a decision, uh, everyone out here would know. Well, when I came home last night, my son said to me, Is it my fault because we played catch the day before? And I told him no. Now, keep in mind, when Tommy John had a tendon removed from his forearm and attached to his pitching elbow, he was only 31. When he came back at age 33, he won more games than he had before the surgery. All right, meanwhile, once again, is there a, more, a worse fielding team in the league than the Mets? Let's go to the videotape. Last night's game, top of the fifth. Shin high chopper to the Fonz. Fonz straddles it, and the throw to first. No, it hits the pitching mound. Then, top of the eighth inning, Rich Aurelia, fly ball left center field. Peyton McEwing, Peyton says, I got it, I got it. But he pulls off at the last minute, drops in, come on, play ball. Giants win 8-2.